silence fills this empty space And I can't get out the stain you left on everything Yeah, you're all over me, but I'm not over you Time hasn't healed, cause I still feel the bruise I don't wanna do this anymore Good morning! Good morning, everybody! Uh, Grammar Art Connections is back uh, with a brand new bootcamp. Yeah, so it's framing from the lovely capital city of Latvia, Riga. Uh, here it's something like uh, 12 p.m. Yeah, so uh, the weather is good, everybody is feeling great. I slept badly. <laughs> I had to say that. Anyway. Uh, so uh, today I intend to do the next edition of my boot camps and it's going to be about Scandinavian. Yeah, yeah, the Scandinavian terrible defense E4 D5. And um, you know, I was I was uh, thinking about this for quite some time. And uh, uh, mainly the reason is that um, many people are afraid. They're afraid of the Scandi. And uh, my intention with this bootcamp, yeah, it shows slightly, uh, slightly um, uh, provocative title as "Crush the Scandinavian." I'm not always you can crush it, but the main point of this bootcamp is to explain you the most important concepts. How should you tackle the Scandinavian? It's not random. It's already been proven. How do you need to? Uh, what's the best approach against that? I'm going to present you some new ideas which you could try to employ and uh, just don't be afraid, right? I mean, Scandinavian is one of the most aggressive uh, defenses and after this bootcamp, I believe you should be feeling so much better. All righty, all righty. So let's start. What is a Scandinavian? Yeah, What's the Scandinavian defense or short version Scandi, so e4, d5. And uh, normally black plays this, and this is very important to understand, not to equalize. This this is by, uh, played by somebody who is looking for a very aggressive game right after the opening and um, voluntarily giving up some tempos. So of course, of course we are going to take on d5. Right, so we take on d5, and here black normally has two moves. So black normally recaptures with the queen, and then there is also knight of six. I'm gonna cover every single move which there is, just to explain you the concept again. And uh, again, I would like to, before I move on, I would like to mention is that I believe that Scandinavian defense is a fun opening. So my goal is not to be little uh, this defense and least uh, the authors who have uh, made some amazing contributions. I know who are the biggest authors out there in this country. 
I'm pretty much aware of this and uh, I've played myself Scandinavian as well. But again, like I said before, the goal is to remove the fear from you so that you know what's the most ambitious approach. So that it's not like Scandinavian is a very uh, scary opening. And I know even some people who are avoiding to play E4 just because there's a Scandinavian in front of them. All right. So we, we are going to take on D5. And uh, let's start with Queen takes on D5. Hey, Simon. Yeah, I'm doing great. I slept badly. I think I already said that. <laughs> Right, okay, so queen to x on d5 is obviously the main move. Yeah, the knight of 6, I'm gonna cover that as well, don't worry about that. So after queen to x on d5, knight c3 is gonna be our move, but let me first explain some of the ideas here. So, black would try to play this position out very, very aggressively. So let's say, if you're playing something like, I mean, let's, let's pretend we don't know any theory here. So knight c3, everybody plays this. Let's say black plays the old-fashioned queen a5. We are fighting for the center. Let's say something like, uh, uh, I don't know, knight f6, knight f3, bishop g4. Oh my goodness, there's a pin. Let's say bishop e2, knight c6, short castle, long castle. Oh my goodness, there's a pawn under attack. And suddenly and quietly black takes it over so this is a very very classic approach how white completely loses control of the game so going for the long castle that's one of the um uh, one of the possible strategies for black about knight f3 i i i see no reason here to play knight f3 i mean i've played knight f3 myself but again i see no reason to avoid the main lines so I'm going to suggest you to play knight c3, it's completely fine. Um, yeah, so after knight c3, black has uh, three moves. Uh, historically wise, everybody used to play queen a5. Yeah, queen a5 used to be a very, very popular move a long, long time ago. Then it sort of became obsolete. Uh, now it's again coming a little bit trendy. People started to play queen a5 again. Then there was a moment when everybody was playing queen d6, including myself. And queen d6 is, I believe, one of the best continuations, if not the best continuation in the position. And then there's the queen d8. About queen d8, historically, I don't know who started this hype. Uh, was it maybe John, John Bartholomew and uh, Chessable and Magnus Carlsen? I mean, Magnus played a lot of queen d8s. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I'm not a big fan of the system. And I'm going to explain you again the concept, uh, uh, how you should uh, treat it. I mean, it, it is possible, of course, to play with black, but essentially black just gives up two tempos and give white... Yeah, John Bartholomew. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful guy. I mean, he has done a lot of contribution in this line. Uh, Queen d8, right? And I think Magnus, uh, I, I'm not sure, I think it was Magnus who adopted this uh, line from him, or maybe it was vice versa. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't really know. It's just a very interesting uh, sideline, which you should be aware of. And finally, there is knight to f6. So I, I propose, perhaps, start with, let's start with knight f6. Uh, just a second, I'll copy the file. I have everything prepared. Uh, just a second, just a second. Here we go. So knight of six has some resemblance to the Alekhine's defense. Yeah, actually it's very, very similar. So black doesn't take the pawn on d5. And um, yeah, he instead develops uh, the knight. So you have to understand first what black is hoping for so let's say if you don't know nothing about the opening your opponent is now playing knight of six now the first obvious question which arises is wait i would like to keep the pawn right so that's that's the first the first thought which comes into your mind to play c4 and this is when black plays either e6 i'm not sure what's even the best here either e6 or c6 uh, i'm not gonna I'm not going to um, promote this line. I just want to explain the concept. Let's say white accepts knight x on c6, something like uh, knight f3, 
e5, bishop c5, and black is just enjoying the game too much. I mean, you have the extra pawn, but this is not a good position. I mean, you just hand over the initiative to black right after the opening, after something like four or five moves, black already is pushing for just one pawn. I think that's a very big price. So this is what I'm not going to recommend. It is still possible to take the pawn on d5 and play c4 afterwards. However, you would have to switch to the Karakan. The Karakan, the so-called pawn of variation, which uh, starts with probably, yeah, I guess um, d4, c takes, another c takes immediately, or knight f3, knight c6, knight c3. There's obviously a number of lines. But as far as I know, here black is doing perfectly. Yeah, there's this one major line that you would have to know. That uh, everybody knows this supposedly. C takes, knight e5, queen b3, e6. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not e6, of course. Uh, bishop takes on f3, g takes, e6, queen b7, la 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 la. And it ends with an equal position. Yes, there are a lot of people who are playing this. So it is still possible. It's still, it is still possible to take the pawn on d5, protect it with c4, and then switch to the pawn of variation. Or if you are ready, let's say you are ready to play with the isolated queen's pawn structure. And let's say you are a big fan of the isolated queen's pawn. Just go for this because I mean it's essentially the same setup always. Just play knight f3, knight c3, bishop d3, short cast. Now you're looking for a checkmate at the king's side, or at least an attack, right? It's completely fine. However, I do believe. If your opponent is giving up two tempis just like that in the opening, it makes sense to pressure for more. Now, uh, normally here, everybody plays d4. Yeah, d4, this is what I used to play myself as well for many years. And there's this tricky line, which starts with bishop g4. Um, I think it was... Uh, who was it? I think it was uh, popularized by David Smerden. I'm, not, I'm not, not really sure. I think so. He wrote a, a Scandi book. Somebody please correct. Yeah, the Portuguese gambit. Yeah, uh, Bishop g4. So I don't want really uh, to dwell in a lot of details in this line. I haven't studied it. I, I believe black is doing fine. Yeah, so the, so the big idea is, again, you want to keep the pawn. Let's imagine you want to keep the pawn and this is what black is hoping for. Hello, super genial. So let's say f3, bishop f5, c4, and e6. Oh my goodness, right? There's another pawn. So seemingly you have to take. And after d takes, knight c6. Probably you would want to take another pawn. And this is when black gets a huge initiative and you don't want to go there. So there have been some attempts Try to not to take the second pawn and, for example, play bishop e3. What was the critical line here? Bishop b4, king, I'm sorry, knight c3 and queen e7. I think so. And there are some spectacular games. I think Magnus Carlsen even played a very, very nice game against... Uh, I uh, forgot to check. Again, I think that was uh, Indian Grandmaster. Maybe I'm mistaken. But uh, this, this line is well covered. And I believe... Yeah, I, I believe that black is doing fine. So my ambition is not try to venture in this line and prove that black's gambit doesn't work. Instead, I'm going to propose you something far more simple. So let's say if you're upon... Okay, this line, by the way, I'm not going to recommend. Because let's say after bishop g4, it's still very tricky for you. After knight f3, queen takes on d5. Bishop e2, here instead of the very solid approach of c6, uh, e6, knight bd7, etc. Black could try to go very aggressive. And this is where a lot of people start to experience problems. For example, let's say knight c6. Although this is not dangerous and white is doing fine, but it does look scary. So for example, knight c6. So... I'm not sure, again, what was the more accurate include h3 or not, but let's say, okay, let's start with short castle, 
long castle. So black already is pressuring the pawn on d4, and this causes quite a lot of concern for the white player. I mean, how do I protect this pawn, right? So for example, black is threatening to take on f3, take the pawn on d4, win the pawn, maybe even push e5. And for example, after something like uh, c3, e5, I mean, black already is doing great. Yeah, so maybe instead of this, maybe there might be some options to reroute the queen to h5, e5, bishop d6, threat on the mate on h2, and it it can be it can be really stressful. I mean, I'm not gonna cover this line. Instead, I propose to play a very very simple move, which is knight f3. So knight f3 are solving these problems. <laughs> And uh, now the question is what black is going to do? Queen takes on d5. We are just going to skip over the second move, queen takes on d5, because this is going to be exactly the same. So you are going to play knight c3, and after queen a5 or queen d6 or whatever, you just play d4. Nothing changes. Yeah, so we already don't need to cover this line, which I'm going to show you a moment later. So after knight f3, let's say black is insisting on bishop g4. So now after bishop g4, the major difference is you still haven't played d4, and now you have option to give a check on b5. So bishop b5 check. Uh, if black is going to play c6, just stand up, say thank you, thank you for the extra pawn, so, uh, I didn't really cover it, I don't think it's a very serious move. Uh, probably something like d takes, knight c6, h3, d3, as long as you're not missing any checks on a5. I cannot really imagine that black is going, going to be fine here. So instead of this, after bishop b5 check, I would expect black to play knight bd7. So now what we do? Normally the rule is this, in the Scandinavian defense, as soon as your opponent's light square bishop jumps to g4, it makes sense to play h3 and question its intentions. Um, you could have played it immediately, here. Yeah, I mean, nobody is really stopping you. But after bishop f3, queen f3, queen takes on d5, I like this position very much so, but I believe that the rising position is going to be even better. So this is still a very good position. You have the center, you have the two bishops, and uh, nothing to be afraid of. So instead of this, let's say bishop g4, bishop b5, check, knight bd7. Now we are going to play h3. And black cannot really take, right? If he is going to take, you just take with the queen. You are protecting the pawn on d5. So the only idea what your opponent wants to do is he wants to win back the pawn as, uh, on d5 as quickly as possible. Uh, is there a shortcoming of d3 instead of d4? Uh, Septavsha, pretty much in none of the lines, I'm not going to recommend to play d3. I see no reason to do that. I see no reason. So here black would play a6, bishop a4, b5, bishop b3, and now the question is, how do you protect the pawn? And for example, something like um, knight c5. I think I already can play c4. I see no reason why I cannot do that. And any c6, e6, all of this already is so slow. Because black is missing the light square bishop in order to generate this very dangerous counterattack. So, uh, yeah, this is not good. About knight b6... Uh, I think it's just knight c3. Yeah, just knight c3, b4, mm, I don't know, knight e4, and something like knight takes on d5. Yeah, there could be a lot of trouble already for black. The f7 square is very weak, and how you're going to defend that. So this is just bad. So this is just bad. You don't do that. Instead of this, after h3, black plays bishop h5, and this leads to a forced line. And that's all you need to know. So now you're going to play knight c3, protecting the pawn on d5. He's going to play a6. Now, the important thing about this position is to understand. You took the pawn. 
just to give it back at the right time. Don't try to hold it. It's a bad idea. So let's say you would play something like bishop a4, b5, bishop b3, and knight c5. I mean, this probably is still a playable position, but black wants to eliminate your light square bishop and take the pawn on d5. Uh, Kiki, about the uh, g4 or knight e5, that's going to be a very thematic idea against the Scandinavian defense. I'm going to mention it pretty much against every single other continuation, just not here. Just not here. So again, if the opponent starts with knight of 6, I propose to start with knight of 3. If he goes bishop g4, first we give a check. We try to preserve the pawn on d5, at least for the time being. Now we are going to try to ask some questions. What are you going to do with this bishop? Bishop h5, knight c3, a6. And now the critical move is bishop e2. You just give the pawn back. There you go, you can have it, I don't mind. So black plays knight b6, d4, we are fighting for the center, knight e5, knight e5, and queen d5. Yeah, this, this is the line which, were, which was already played a couple of times, and the knight on b6 remains to stop white's intentions to play c4. And here's, a, again, a simple line, short castle. And by the way, notice that black cannot really increase the pressure against the pawn on b4. The knight is not on c6. e5 is miles away. So here, for example, e6 b3, I think this is the simplest choice, bishop e7, c4, queen goes away, bishop e2, short castle, instead of the short castle, by the way, I'm going to show you a couple of lines, but again, here after the short castle, you can already play g4, bishop g6, and knight e5, and this maneuver essentially is the bread and butter against the Scandinavian defense, you're going to see it a million times. So your goal is not only try to eliminate the light square bishop, but also gain considerable space advantage. Position your light square bishop on f3, and maybe, just maybe, you could think about playing h4, h5. Maybe not here, but the idea is going to remain. So for example, after knight e5, I imagine something like knight e7 could be played, knight g6 takes... Uh, now we are following a correspondence game where white managed to score I think I think he won it yeah he <laughs> didn't yeah he won he won it so white managed to build a very serious uh, attack with the following moves queen d3 king g2 and h4 and how do you stop this how do you stop the attack with rook h1 and h5 so that's a very, very dangerous attack. Because bishop takes an h4. I imagine f4, g5, captures, captures, rook h1. I don't think really black is going to appreciate the incoming attack. Why king g2? It's just we are preparing the h file to storm the king. Yeah, and for example, something like queen h7 already is a big threat. Uh, f5 weakens the king very much. Uh, let's say something like g6, d5, and oh, there's something also hanging on h8. So this is a very, very classic idea. Again, let's go back uh, just a second. I slightly fast forward it. It very often comes together uh, with a kingside attack. So you're playing g4, knight e5. With the idea to play bishop f3, with the idea to take on g6, and with the idea to play king g2, rook h1, to play h4, h5. Open the h file, start the attack. So, black will play knight e7, takes, takes. Um, you know, actually here, when I was looking at this position, I thought, why don't you just try immediately to play bishop f3, c6, and d5, because this very much makes sense. And I asked the engine, the engine says, yeah, this is completely fine. This is completely playable. But I guess that black gets some sort of a counterplay. Let's say after, um, not sure after which move takes, um, takes and something like 
Bishop f6, yeah. So black manages to trade it, uh, dark square bishops, but still I imagine this position to be, uh, I'm sorry, maybe not d takes first. Maybe I'm going to take first on f6. Bishop takes on f6. Yeah, maybe this is some call holding because of some tactics. Yeah, but this is still quite a viable plan to open the light square bishop, which you have on the h1, a8 diagonal. You're aiming for a position bishop and two queenside pawns against the knight and two queenside pawns. And the bishop normally should dominate the knight. But this is just an alternative plan, which you always can consider to. But here, with a pawn on g6, I think it makes sense to start a kingside attack. So you might be worried. What, what about the weak dark squares? Right. We have weaknesses on a 4 on g5. But to be honest, who is going to exploit them? How is black going to position, for example, the knight? So there might be some idea to play g5, rook e8, knight f8, knight g6, knight f4. Oh my goodness, this is so slow. This is so long. I mean, I could try to make it work. For example, let's say, um, let's say instead of the bishop f3, queen d3, I could try to make it work. G5. Let's say I could play probably the same king g2, rook e8, and yeah. Now the question is probably something like here, knight f8. Yeah, probably I need to position the bishop here first. Yeah, this is of course a possibility. Uh, speed is key. Yeah, that that that's that's what I like. That's what I like. Speed is key. So my suggestion is try to play out the position as aggressively as you can. Yeah, don't don't take it uh, slowly. Yeah, I think actually here the plan of bishop f3, c6, d5 makes a lot of sense. Maybe you can try to improve it. Wait for the knight first, go to f8, and then you push d5. Because the knight is away from the center. So you could try to combine those ideas. So one idea is playing king g2, rook h1, going for the h-file opening and the king side attack. The second idea is pushing forward the d-pawn, opening the bishops. So that is one possibility. Um, this this uh, position pretty much is a forced line. Right? If black is playing bishop g4. You are giving a check. Knight e7 is the best. Bishop h5 is the best. a6 is the best move. You retreat. Knight b6 has to be played. Um, okay, I mean, theoretically, black would try to include b5, a3. I don't see how it really improves its position. So knight b6, d4, takes, takes. Maybe with the other knight it makes sense to take as well. Let's say takes, takes, and take with the queen. But then you can just play c4. Then you just play c4. Let's say the queen goes, I don't know where away. Queen d6. Something like uh, bishop e3. And now you're thinking about g4 and knight e5 again. Maybe castle first. But look at this position. You're just enjoying a healthy pawn structure and a strong center. Uh, usually the knight gets taken. I'm not so sure if here you're I think you're mixing up the lines. Um not here, not in this line, because I already explained that after knight f3, bishop g4, bishop b5, knight e7, and h3, black is going to experience trouble to win back the pawn on d5. So how are you gonna win it back? Again, takes, takes, a6, here, b5, here. How do you want to win back the pawn? You're missing the last square bishop. So this is slightly different position. We don't have the pawn on d4. We managed to win a tempo. Right. So again, bishop g4. Boom. 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 Um, yeah, everybody, you, uh, I think they play with the knight after d5. Takes, takes. Castle here. And again, you have a very, very pleasant choice how to continue. I think that this is a very good setup. And instead of this, here you have a lot of options. Nobody says you have to play bishop b2, g4, knight e5. You're really concerned about the dark squares. Just play positional chess. Just play something like bishop f4. Bishop f4, 
short castle and probably I think you are gonna have to play knight e5 at some moment to fight for even more space maybe even something like queen c2 rook e1 rook d1 bishop d3 I, I couldn't see how black is really enjoying this position and at the right time you're gonna play knight e5 yeah where's black's activity here I mean he is holding but again you have to understand that as far as I'm concerned, people are playing the Scandinavian defense, not to hold. They're playing to fight for initiative. Here I'm seeing no initiative. So that is one idea. Uh, then after knight of six and this tricky move knight of three, let's say black could try to take on d5 with the knight. So it's completely playable line. Um, yeah, instead of bishop g4, of course, Knight takes on d5. So this is some kind of like kind of defense. Looks very, very familiar. And now we just play d4. Now we're just playing d4. And we are not going to be concerned that black would play knight c6, bishop g4 with the queen on d5, long castle to uh, be concerned about the well-being of the pawn on d4. And here black has a number of moves. Uh, normally people, I think that they, they do play g6. Let's say, if he is now going to continue with bishop g4, now nothing changes. We are going to play h3. So that's again, pretty much a general rule in the Scandinavian defense. As soon as the light square bishop for black, it lands on g4, just play h3, automatic. With some exceptions, when you have something better, like in the previous example, you could play bishop b5 check. Otherwise, we would just play h3 without thinking. So h3, um, again, black usually retreats, but let's say bishop f3, queen f3, c6, and aiming for some kind of a typical Scandinavian structure. Now, let's have a look at this position. So you have two bishops, you have a center. So the plan here is extremely simple. So you're playing c4, you're going to protect the pawn on d4, you're going to de develop the queenside knight, you're going to go long castle, g4, h4, g5, h5, just go checkmate black. It's a very simple approach. So, And this is what I'm going to recommend in many setups. Just don't go short castle, it's just so slow. Just play slightly more aggressive. Because black cannot really cause you any serious trouble at the queen side. He's missing the last square bishop. Right. So here, of course, we are going to play c4. So c4, I imagine knight of six has to be played. Um, knight b4 doesn't look good. I guess the simple queen b3 and black is already experiencing some problems here. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Of course, you can. By the way. By the way, I again, I want to remind, I have the biggest, uh, biggest, uh, what was the proper word? Uh, not experience, but biggest, biggest respect. I have the biggest respect for the Scandinavian defense. <laughs> no, I have the biggest respect for the Scandinavian defense. And again, the goal of this bootcamp is not to belittle the Scandinavian defense. It is a great opening. The purpose of this bootcamp is to explain you how to properly tackle it. Yeah, just treat it with the attitude. I should crush it. I mean, somebody plays against you Scandinavian, you just stand up and you say, thank you. Thank you for those two extra tempos. Just don't be afraid. Just play it very aggressively. <laughs> right, so this is night, be night before is bad. Night of six. Bishop e3, e6, I imagine, has to be played. And here, white has a number of choices. I think the best one is to position the knight on d2 with an idea that knight gets rerouted to f3. And after f3, it controls the d4 square. It controls the e5 square. And to be honest, when you're looking at this position, again, we start to play g4. Where is black's play what is black doing here because that's one of the biggest problems in the static defenses and 
I have pretty, pretty good experience. For example, the same Semislav. I could do a bootcamp about the same Semislav. It's a super solid opening. But the problem with every single setup, which involves a solid but static position, is that the, the side which is putting the static and the solid approach is going to experience problems to play active. So the question is, how is black going to be active? Because every single active plan usually comes together with pawn push. Yeah, if black is going to play h6, you just play h4, g5. That's it. You're going to make long castle. Easy, right? So again, the question is, where is the black king going to castle? So I would imagine it would make sense to castle long, right? Because the king side already is looking scary. So after something like g4, I don't know really where to position the pieces here. Let's say um, h6. Hey, thank you for the cheer. Appreciate that. So let's say h6. Oh, not h5, of course. h6, h4. So g5 already is a g5, g6 is a big problem. Um, I don't know. I mean, let's say the knight on a6. Long castle. So I would imagine this scenario, yeah, he has to run away. He has to run away because the king's already is starting to be under a heavy attack. And queen c, I don't know, queen c7 something, um, g5 makes sense. Takes, 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 97. And you can just continue pressure your opponent um, however you wish. Maybe something like g6 already is working. Uh, you're attacking full steam already. Uh, your opponent is still looking for a way to escape towards the queen side. Uh, it's not a free rook. Uh, queen, F8, queen H8 is going to be bishop F8 or knight F8. Something like that. Bishop F8, I guess. But you're just enjoying two bishops. Strong center and a space advantage. So let's go back. And again, this is going to be one of my... Favorite approaches, if you have a choice, always position the pawn on c4. There's going to be some differences. I'll try to explain you. Uh, go for the space advantage. Go for a very strong pawn center and go for the king side attack. It's super simple and should be applicable in many, many setups. The knight on the queen side, either to d2 or c3, maybe doesn't really matter. Maybe on d2 is more flexible because on f3 it's controlling more squares and g4, h4, g5, just go for the checkmate. All right. So let's say after bishop g4, black is not going to take. h3, bishop h5, c4, knight c3. So this setup is uh, usually the same. e6 and... At some moment, you're going to feel, now this is the right moment where we have to play g4. g4, knight e5, oh sorry, here goes h4. I thought it's going to be knight e5, but h4 apparently in this particular position already is stronger. So where's the idea? You're threatening to win the bishop with h5. So let's say black is going to play h5. Knight e5. And this is a very important pawn structure that you should know. That after knight e5, let's say he is going to, I don't know, take here on g4. Now just take it. And this is a strategic nightmare. So the queen and your light square bishop can easily target these weak pawns. So exactly the same position could appear if black would play h6, knight e5. You want to take on g6. You want to eliminate this light square bishop. So for example, again, something like... Knight e7, knight g6, takes, and I don't know, I mean, probably even bishop d3. Yeah, bishop d3, queen c2. How are you going to defend this pawn? I'm just going to castle long. Bishop e3, long castle. I'm already attacking at the king side. So this is bad. Yeah. So after g4, bishop g6, h4. I'm not sure, actually, maybe knight e5 was alternative. Uh, let's say h6, knight e5. Here, queen of three, I imagine. Oh, wait, queen of three is f6. Just a second. Yeah, I guess I have to start with something more accurate. Bishop e3, queen of three, long castle, attack is charging forward. 
So let's say black is playing something like, I don't know, 97, probably take, take, queen f3, um, yeah, so maybe, maybe this wasn't exactly the most accurate. I just wanted to show you, show you the idea. And again, it seems quite apparent that white is attacking and enjoying the center. Yeah, this wasn't the most accurate. I already see the, the engine doesn't really like it, but the entire approach is pretty much always the same. You're playing h3, bishop h5, you're playing g4. Bishop g6. Now instead of the h4, normally white plays knight e5. Uh, let's say knight e7. Now you can take on g6. H takes on g6. And here already you can enjoy some space advantage. For example, push immediately d5. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, d5 gives away a lot of dark squares. Maybe c5. Knight e5. Takes, takes, and something like... Queen b3, bishop e3, bishop g2. I mean, what is black doing here? Again, you're enjoying a, a very considerable space advantage and two bishops, and black already is hanging some pawns. Extremely unpleasant. So no, nobody normally plays like this. Um, again, d4, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, c4, knight b6, knight c3. Your plan is always the same. You want to play g4, bishop e3, knight e5, position the queen somewhere active, long castle, and play extremely aggressively in the center. Instead of this, let's say black would play g6. c4, knight c3. Um, again, bishop g4 is something that you need to be aware of. Here, bishop g4 immediately gives away the center. I think, yeah, c5 already is the best move here, but, but the simple move h3 should do just fine. At least I think so, just a second, let me check it. Queen f3, knight c6, and... Okay, I mixed up. Yeah, I, I think I mixed up. Yeah, I think I mixed up. After knight c3, I didn't check this line thoroughly. Okay, here it was c5. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot. <laughs> right. Hey, Lady in Black. So c5 is a quite a typical idea to play queen b3 afterwards. So for example, knight e5. Um, just a second. I think it was. I think it was here. I didn't check this line. I'll tell you honestly. Is it bishop queen b3 here? Because that's the thematic idea. Queen b3. Knight takes, B takes, takes... Oh, this looks awful for black. Yeah, B6. Okay, not so simple, by the way. Not so simple. So I guess after Knight D5, it's... Yeah, it's Bishop C4. I just checked the engine. So Bishop C4. Knight C3 typically is met with Bishop F7 ideas. Let's say take. And... Oh, there's already take, take, Knight G5... This is a very common idea to win the bishop on g4, but I guess simple b takes should be should be just fine. Yeah. So again, this this is a quite a thematic idea. I just wasn't sure really uh, was it in this particular position. So again, knight c3, bishop g4, and play c5. And this knight is struggling to find a good square. So knight e5, bishop c4, some bishop f7 ideas appear, and after knight e7, I think it should be the same. Yeah, I guess it should be the same. Let's say bishop c4 again, threatening bishop f7, knight g5, e6, and something like h3. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Takes, takes, um, knight c6, bishop e3. You already see where this is going. You're going to castle long. You're going to play g4, h4, h5 at the king side. I mean, how simple is that? Right, again, bishop g7, long castle, short castle, h4 h5 g4 i i don't see black surviving this to be honest so serious players don't play this um they might try to play g6 c4 knight b6 knight c3 instead of bishop g4 because bishop g4 that's a very old theory as far as i remember c5 is considered to be the best and after bishop g7 I think now it makes most sense to play h3. 
Hey, Nikola, how are you? So you're making sure that black cannot play bishop g4 anymore. I mean, it's not like we really mind, but it's just a good move to sort of underline the uselessness of this bishop. Bishop e3, knight c6. And about this position, I want to mention. This used to be an interesting line a long time ago. Now the engine is completely killing it. It's just, just not playable for black. And uh, what you don't want to do here, you don't want to play immediately d5. Yeah, this is slightly risky. Because d5, knight a5. Suddenly, you have some problems to defend the pawn on c4. Otherwise, d5 would be a very good move. Very good move fighting for the space advantage. Now, b3, the knight on c3 hangs. How do you protect the pawn on c4? It's difficult. And if you have to take on b6, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare decision. You don't want to do that. So instead of this, bishop e2 first. We're making sure continuing our development. And now, after e5, d5, knight e7. Now, there is a very nice move. I played it 19 years ago. <laughs> I checked the database because this seemed very, very familiar to me. Back in 2002, I last played this line. Already back then, I knew the continuation here. And since black is threatening to play knight f5, eliminate this dark to a bishop, you play g4. Extremely aggressive. g4, and yeah, you're not allowing this knight to jump to f5. c6, d6 gives away the piece. f5. And back in 2002, I was playing against Russian international master. I think now he's a grandmaster, Konstantin Maslak. I play knight g5. And if I remember correctly, that used to be the strongest move at the time. Now, with the modern engines, queen b3, long castle, c5, you wave goodbye to your opponent. So, for example, he could play e4, knight g5, h6. You switch on stockfish. Stockfish says white is simply winning after long castle. White sacrifices the piece, going extremely aggressively against black c5 already is a killing move knight e6 is a very strong threat so probably black has to take c5 what to do here i mean something like knight takes on d5 i can imagine knight e5 bishop e6 and now the critical move i think it was i don't i think it was bishop g5 yeah black is completely busted no, Long Castle doesn't need any co-clash. It's just the attitude. <laughs> it's just an attitude how to play against the Scandinavian defense. Just don't play Short Castle. So, again. So, the entire sequence of uh, Knight of 6, Knight of 3 already told you what to do against Bishop G4. Knight takes on D5. Is Now we are going to play D4. Any Bishop G4 ideas now, you are going to play H3. You, if he takes, you fight for the space, you start the kingside attack. If he doesn't do that, if he retreats to h5, you're going to take the center, you're going to push g4, you're going to play bishop e3, knight e5, make a long castle anyway. Your king might be vulnerable to counterattacks. Um, that's part of chess. That's part of chess, right? So if you're going to play short castle, you're not going to be able to launch those impressive attacks against the king, against the black king at the king side. And uh, I don't think really black has enough resources to checkmate you with two pawns at the queen side, so you shouldn't be really concerned about that. And think about what is going to happen to your opponent's king. I like what you said, Marco. Yeah, you need to take risks. <laughs> Otherwise, we're playing checkers, right? We're playing chess. Exactly. Okay, so that was bishop g4. Uh, I'm sorry, knight of six, second move. Again, do you have any questions? Because I think I, I think it's pretty simple. So knight of six, knight of three, if bishop g4, then you play bishop b5 check. This leads to this forced line after knight e7 here, here, retreat, knight b6, here, captures, captures, captures. 
Short castle b3, bishop b2, c4, g4, knight e5. I mean, how simple is this? I don't know. It's very simple to me. If black doesn't do that, after knight, after knight of 6, bishop b5, you mean here? Uh, it's a possibility. Yeah, but again, I, I imagine... I didn't check this line, by the way. It could be also possible. Yeah, I guess it could be extremely similar. Extremely similar. Yeah, bishop b5 check immediately. It might be possible. Knight d7, then play d4. Just give away the spawn again. And enjoy... Just just enjoy uh, space advantage and healthy position. I mean, what's what's to be concerned about here? So that, that was knight of 6. Uh, it has some modest popularity. Uh, again, after knight of six, knight of three, knight e5, now you play d4. Your setup almost always is the same. Let's say he is going to do something like g6, c4, knight c3. If the bishop goes here, you want to play c5 already. So bishop g7. Now you don't make it possible. Position one bishop here, the second bishop here. And the question is what black is doing here. Yeah, black is losing a lot of time. e5, d5, knight e7, g4, stopping knight f5, queen b3, long castle. Again, I like this very much. Alrighty, let's let's uh, move forward. And now I'm going to show you the next line. Uh, the next line is particularly popular. This queen d8 line. So e4, d5, takes, queen d5, knight c3, queen d8. Yeah, I already mentioned in the beginning of the boot camp, this uh, has seen some uh, popularity, um, mainly uh, because of some recent studies. And uh, the world champion Magnus Carlsen even started to play this line. But again, I think it's uh, uh, quite important uh, to understand that among uh, very good players... They're not playing this in classical chess. Yeah, they're normally playing this in Blitz and Rapid. And uh, I cannot really imagine at a serious level uh, somebody play this line, uh, let's say, in a World Championship match Yeah, today. I mean, that would be completely crazy, but I mean, everything, of course, is possible. Um, Black essentially gives away two tempos, and your setup is going to be very, very simple. Again, d4, knight of 6, and knight of 3. So now the question is, uh, because he's Norwegian, yeah, he has to play some Scandi, right? Yeah, he's from Norway. That's a good one. So here the most popular choice is bishop g4. Yeah, bishop g4, yeah. People used to play this quite a lot. And uh, the idea is uh, pressure the pawn on d4. And now I'm going to tell you one little secret. You probably already know this. I used to play Scandinavian. Some years. Yeah, I used to play it something like five, seven years ago. Maybe, maybe maybe even more. And I came to realize that people are playing the Scandinavian. They're bluffing with the attack on the pawn on d4. So if you're concerned that your opponent is really pressing the pawn on d4, I have news for you. It's, it's a bad idea. Black very often is not even interested to win the pawn on d4 so he is playing on your fears so for example he just plays bishop g4 and you're thinking oh my goodness so my pawn on d4 now is indirectly attack under attack so he wants to play bishop takes on f3 queen takes on d4 what i'm gonna do so the first reaction is i need to defend so that's the wrong approach so for example you play bishop e3 i'm so concerned about this although the, <laughs> by the way this is still a good line um, a bishop e3, let's say black is playing, I don't know, what could he play here? Something like... I, I'm out of good suggestions here, really. So let's say something like e6, I'm going to play very passively, c6, very passively. And probably black already is having a normal position. Although, I cannot, I, I don't really like this. Uh, the reason why I started... Why not started? Why I dropped Scandinavian defense myself at black is 
I realized I'm gaining little because I'm bluffing with this uh, winning the pawn on d4. And even if my opponent, he defends, I'm gaining nothing. I'm gaining nothing. I mean, winning some time, maybe even if white plays very passively, he defends the pawn. It's very difficult to crash through. So at just one moment, I realized I needed to do something else because it wasn't for me. Of course, I mean, this is, this is again, again, this is my opinion, my own opinion, uh, that uh, you shouldn't really be overly concerned about well-being on the pawn on d4, and with the help of the modern engines, it's easy to prove. So here after bishop g4, what do you have to do? You already know the motive. Of course, you're playing h3. You're playing h3, you're eliminating the bishop, and black doesn't really have a choice. Because if he's going to play bishop h5, I didn't even have a look at this. Nobody plays like that. Yeah, so bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, knight e5, h4, h5 is threatening. Let's say e6 already is bad. Yeah, imagine. h4, that's it. This is game over. I mean, you're threatened to play h5. You already recognize the idea after h5. You just take. And this is something you're going to attend very very quickly yeah so something like g5 queen d3 or bishop d3 i mean i don't know this is extremely big weakness so after knight e5 normally a scandinavian defense player he is going to recognize you want to play h4 so he needs to get rid of the knight from e5 as quickly as possible so something like knight d7 and again you have a very very pleasant choice so for example boom Boom, and g5. I guess this is the most aggressive approach. The knight gonna jump further. No knight e5, no knight e4, knight g8, you can go there. Knight h5. And this is one of the most overrated squares, probably in chess. It's just a terrible square for the knight. It may seem, this is a very nice outpost. In reality, that's a half knight. It's not doing anything there. You are very happy to see the knight standing there. You are going to make sure he's going to remain there. So again, your idea remains the same. You're going to castle along. Nothing changes. So I guess queen f3, c6, um, bishop e3, long castle, h4, bishop h3, play extremely aggressively. Although the engine is saying already um, that d5 is the strongest. Okay, okay, might be. Might be d5 might be the strongest just before just because black hasn't played e6 and c6 just yet. And as soon as the position is going to open, you have very good bishops and the knight on the edge of the board. Not good for black. So that's the reason why black always takes. Yeah, he always takes on f3. Queen takes on f3 and c6. And now this is quite a critical position. Um, I checked the games uh, prior to bootcamp, how people are playing here. I saw a million possibilities here, how people are tackling it. If you are a very uh, <laughs> shy player and uh, you don't want to play extremely aggressive, you want to play some positional chess, nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you to play queen d3. It's completely fine. You protect the pawn. You protect the pawn, you're playing g3, knight e7, bishop g2. This is very much fine. It promises white already two bishops. It promises white to center. But you are not causing your opponent any trouble. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's not a very ambitious, ambitious approach, but still completely fine. Um, yeah. A most played line here is bishop e3. This is this is the line which I don't understand really. Why do you have to position the bishop on e3? But everybody plays this. So for example, bishop e3, e6. Uh, what was the line again? Long castle, I think. Yeah, because it it it's in the spirit of uh, the Scandinavian defense. Bishop e4, knight e4, takes takes, and queen d5. Yeah, I think so. This is uh, this is one of the typical ideas of the Scandi uh, to force the queen trade and black usually is sort of happy yeah because 
Uh, he is training the queens. He's attacking the pawn on a2. So after queen takes, c takes. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't really see what black should be overly excited about here. Because white is still enjoying the two bishops. And I guess even c4 makes sense. Yeah, just going for the opening the position. Because you have two bishops, d takes and bishop takes. King b1 and d5. I don't know, guys, but it looks looks very very much fine to me. So this is not something I should be um, concerned about. But still, I mean, this is what everybody plays. This is no, I don't think it's winning. It's just a just an advantage, just an advantage. However, I think I already told you is that black is not really in the mood. To take the pawn on d4. So keep this in your mind. I mean, he's not interested to take the pawn on d4. So if he's not really interested to take the pawn on d4, why you are playing bishop e3? Now that's a very, very big question. Why do you position the bishop so passively? What do you think is the best move here? I That's my proposition. It's a not, not a very popular move, but I think it's extremely interesting. Yeah, what, what if they're going to take? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Don't worry about that. What would you play here if you... Bishop f4, by the way, this is what I... Accidentally, I discovered I had it played it once. <laughs> I didn't even recognize. Uh, uh, didn't even remember the game. Yeah, bishop f4 is very interesting, by the way. Bishop f4 with the idea that queen d4 is bad because of knight b5. Yeah, this is this is not playable. Nice, nice trap, by the way. So, for example, um, c takes, queen takes. That's a mate threat. Um, just a second. What was the line again? Ah, right, okay, that was just bad. I think, yeah, just outright. Oh, just a second. Oh, sorry, not queen b seven. Not queen b seven. It's bishop b five. Yeah, I mixed up. I mixed up. It's bishop b five. And after bishop b five. Uh, knight d7, queen b7, for example, rook d8, bishop c7, queen e4, boom, boom, and long castle. And knight e6, boom, boom, boom. I mean, there's more than one lines like that. It just, it just doesn't work. Black cannot really take on, on d4. So this idea of 9b5 is a very nice idea. But the problem with this entire approach is that black still plays e6. And after long castle still plays bishop b4. Although I think this is still a quite interesting line. And after knight e4, knight e4, queen e4, queen d5. Again, black is going for the same approach. I think now it makes sense to play queen e5. Now, this is a very interesting approach. You don't take on d5 yourself. You're inviting to take your opponent. You're going to take with a d-pawn, and you're just going to enjoy some space advantage on two bishops. Seems to be easy to me. However, I'm looking at this position, and I the first question which was in my mind when I was preparing for the boot camp, why don't we play g4? And where's the problem? Why don't we play g4 right here, right now? Where's the problem? So I checked. Yeah, it's completely fine. Actually, it looks great. And again, now after g4, our plan is to push g5. What if, I ta if they take on a2? Uh, there's a complex line. Just a second. Very quickly, I'm going to show you. c6. This is not what I want to recommend. Just, just an interesting alternative. Takes, takes, queen d5, queen e5, takes, c3. Uh, you're threatened to take here. And after bishop, what was the line again? Here, queen c7. Yeah, this is not good. So black might give you some checks. Check, check, check. King d2. And queen c8 is a big threat. And black is just busted. So it's not a good line. So I imagine, I imagine here after queen e5, that's my discovery. I'm not so sure if anybody has played this line yet. 
But the problem with the Scandinavian, there's so many lines, interesting lines, which give advantage for white. And yeah, it's just one of one of them, one of them. So after queen takes, d takes, I imagine knight d7, and just play a bishop e2. Bishop e2, you're enjoying some space advantage to bishops. But again, I I treat this not enough. I mean, it's okay, it's fine, it's completely fine, but still black is very solid. Queen a1, king c2, queen a4, king d2. The king always goes to d2. Scurry can, if I, understood, if I answered your question. Yeah, and king d2, king d2 in your line. So I'm proposing to play g4. This is my proposition. And I think it, it could uh, score you some nice points. So your idea is extremely simple. You want to push g5. How do you stop that? <laughs> So queen takes on d4, imagine this is this is the top choice everybody is concerned about. But again, remember, if you're playing against experienced Scandinavian defense player, he is not going to take the pawn. He knows that this is a bluff. He is not really interested to take the pawn on d4 because white gets a very strong initiative very quickly. Now I'm going to show you some lines. Some lines, just some sample lines, so that you feel the general, um, the general um, understanding of the position. Of course, yeah, bishop e3. Um, let's say black is gonna play instead of queen d8. Let's say queen b4. Yeah, queen b4, and he just wants to play e6, knight e7, etc., etc., etc. Long castle. Now look at this position, and the question is. How black is going to finish the development? You are already threatening with g5. Very big threat. h6, h4. Ah, wait, h4, there's not here, but I imagine I imagine you can prepare that. Actually, there's another threat, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's knight b5. Knight b5, c takes, queen b7. You already recognize this idea uh, from the previous sidelines, some check ideas on c7. Could be rather unpleasant. So let's say he's playing something like h6, here, queen a5, and a shake hands. That's it. Knight c7 mate. That's it. We just finished the game. <laughs> you mean g4? They, they played it? Uh, g5. Why it's important? You're you're gaining a lot of time. You're gaining a lot of tempos. <laughs> G4 really? <laughs> wow, that's interesting. That's not to my credit. Ah, just in just in time played it. It's a very logical move. It's a very logical move. That was that was my first question because I understand the essence of the Scandinavian defense. Black doesn't want to take the pawn on d4. And if he doesn't want to take the pawn on d4, why you are playing bishop e3 or queen d3? Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So g4 is extremely logical. Oh, just a second. Yeah, so queen d4, bishop e3. Let's say queen b4, long castle. Um, what? After knight b5? Yeah, there's the queen. Queen is trapped. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's say black is playing e6. Yeah, so I guess this would be the most reasonable continuation. Now, you're going to see it's very easy to develop initiative. Boom. g5. So, what should black do here? Knight e5. Bishop d4. And the question is, how black is going to finish the development? The bishop on f8, it's not moving. Rook g8 looks extremely, extremely terrible, because rook g8, it means you're never going to castle short. So I would imagine knight e7. It makes sense, right? Takes, takes, and h4. That's it. This is the position. So this is one of the sample positions. White has sacrificed the pawn, but black is experiencing huge problems. Why not 
What? Why not Nightbeef? What are you talking there? What Night B5? Why do you want to play Night B5? Where Night B5? There's no Night B5, guys. Guys, there's no Night B5. Which line are you talking about? Ah, you mean here Night B5? Um, yeah, by the way, Night B5 is also playable. By the way, I, I didn't check it so thoroughly. <laughs> I'll tell you honestly. Yeah, Night B5. I guess something like Night A6. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm just showing a sample line. So let's say uh, e6, g5. g5 is more forcing. Knight e5, bishop d4, knight e7, takes, takes, and h4. And the question is, how black is finishing the development? Long castle, this pawn is under attack. Rook g8, it solves nothing. I mean, I don't know, rook g8, I could play... Uh, something like uh, what should I play here? I, I guess something like h5. Of course, with the engine, for me, it's easy to say here. Maybe maybe bishop g2 just develop the posi position. Bishop c5, bishop c3, rook e1, h5, g6. So you are sacrificing the pawn for a huge lead in development and you're seeking for ways to open the position. Maybe even c4. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really check it so much. So let's say h4, rook g8, maybe, maybe c4. Why not? It's very reasonable. D takes. Bishop c3. Looks super scary. Queen b5. Queen e4. This is an attack. This is an attack. I mean, where's this guy going? So that's that's one possibility. How you can continue. Uh, let's say black is not doing that. He's playing queen d8. He's stopping your possibility to castle long. Back to the safety. Queen d8 with intentions to play e6, knight d7. Now what do you do? <laughs> play g5 anyway. Yeah, you, you sacrifice the pawn on d4, exactly. You sacrifice the pawn on d4 to gaining momentum, gaining time, opening lines, opening diagonals. It's a very good trade. Uh, yeah, I, I think many people won't take on d4 because they understand. They understand the consequences of a very strong attack, especially it works in some accelerated time controls, rapid and blitz, where initiative is even far more important. Yeah, because you're just charging forward, your opponent has to find the defense for just this one pawn. One pawn. So here after g5, 95, long castle, e6. Yeah, this line, when I was looking, it made most sense to me. Yeah, because black manages to uh, position the queen back to the safety. He wants to play knight e7. He wants to play bishop e7, etc. We have the lead in development. We have two bishops. What should we do? Boom. Open the position. Let's open the position. Knight takes on d5. You don't care about the pawn. You're going for the attack. So knight e5. Let's say your opponent is going to take e takes. E takes, I don't know, I mean, probably rook e1. Goodbye. That's it. How do you how do you defend here? It's, the king is walking to d7, c4, just demolish the position. It, it's extremely, extremely unpleasant. So after knight takes and d5, c takes. Again, remember, you're looking for opening the position. Boom, c4. Black. This is black's development. Zero. So c4. Here. King b1. Here. Queen e4. You're all op opening the position as quickly as possible. c3 I imagine is going to be something like rook c1. I didn't really check it. Knight c6. Here. Bishop e7. Uh, let's say this. Let's say this position. It makes perfect sense. It may seem that black is enjoying a free pawn. Yeah, 
he has a free pawn, but I, I can promise you he's not enjoying it. Now, can you tell me here, please, a sensible move for black? Because I wasn't able to find any. You're just charging forward at the king, so you're not allowing the black king to castle long. I'm out of the good suggestions here. So, for example, long castle is impossible. How do you long castle? You meaning bishop d6? Bishop d6 already is screaming for some kind of uh, big sacrifice. I don't know. Bishop d6. Uh... Yeah, by the way, does it work? I was thinking about sacrificing on e6. I'm not sure. Just let me check it. I didn't check it, by the way. Takes, takes, queen e6, bishop e7, g6. Okay, this is not so clear, by the way. Okay, let's not sacrifice. Maybe let's continue with the plan to play h5, g6. How do you play here? So let's say uh, long castle, g6. Takes, 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 takes. And somehow, somehow black has managed to survive. Yeah, we just won back the pawn. But again, our intention, we are still pushing here because we have the two bishops. That was not our intention. We didn't sacrifice the pawn to regain it back. I guess I didn't play it active enough. Yeah, so I could I could uh, roll it back. So let's say h instead of the h5. Long castle. Yeah, maybe bishop b5 and rook c1. That makes perfect sense. So you're charging now at the queen side. So again, the question is, how is black enjoying the extra pawn? He's not. He's not enjoying it. So instead of this, black would try to play, let's say, again, we are starting having a look at this line. G4. Uh, takes. Bishop E3 here. G5 here. Long castle. Captures. Open. You're gonna you're gonna see that this is very very straightforward continuation. So c4, king b1, opening the position, aiming to open the lines, aiming to open the diagonals. Let's say black is going castle. Yeah, castle. I mean this I think this makes most sense, but this is a suicide. So now you're playing bishop d3, and that's it. This is a killing attack already. There's no defense. So after h5, we are not going to trade queens. h takes, queen h7 is a mate. And again, I don't see black ever surviving this. Yeah, you just, uh, You're just doubling the rooks on the h-file. Queen h8, rook h7 mate. And yeah, just, just extremely... Let's say this already is a mate on the board. Boom, 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 boom. That's a mate. So black gonna do that. And I guess at some moment he has to open the position. Yeah, and this is when you just uh, open the position, have so many pieces charging the king. Yes, yeah, so let's say g takes, queen, I don't know, queen takes, and just don't trade the queens. Ah, that's a mate on one, okay. Let's say bishop takes, and just queen e4. That's it. There's no chance. I mean, there's bishop h6, there's rook h8, there's queen e6, there's bishop c4, there's a million threats. And it doesn't even feel that black is up a pawn. Yeah, King Gustav has fallen. <laughs> right. Um, again, I, I would like to immediately uh, point out this is not an encyclopedia. I just want to explain you the general approach, how I think the Scandinavian defense should be approached, if your opponent is giving you extra tempos, you're looking for a uh, long castle, you don't mind to sacrifice the pawn on d4. And again, I think this is where uh, some people could uh, experience problems. I know, I know, many of you are afraid. You're afraid to sacrifice a pawn. You're afraid to sacrifice exchanges. You're afraid to hand away the material because the arguments always are the same. There might be no checkmate. Yeah, I think I've heard this. I think I've heard this argument so many times. 
Thank you, Bijan. But think about this. I think you should be afraid that you didn't act active enough. And you just played too passively and you missed your chance to start a spectacular attack. So after G4, I checked the database. I think there were something like six games. Six games. It's a very rare line. It makes to me a lot more sense than bishop e3 or queen d3, even knight e2. I mean, it's terribly slow. So we are sacrificing the pawn on d4 to accelerate the attack. I checked none, none games were queen d4. <laughs> of course. I mean, black understands that taking this pawn is extremely risky. So, e6. Now, I think you're going to pretty have a pretty good guess how should we continue. g5, knight e5. And the only difference here is we are not going to trade knights. We are going to use the knight's outpost on d5 to win even more time. Knight e4. So our idea is to play c4. Hey, Paradise today. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So your idea is to play c4, fight for the space advantage. And again, this pawn on g5, it's going to be your backbone of starting a king saga to solve. h4, h5, g6, h6, boom, long castle, charge forward. You need to give away the pawn on d4? No problem. You can have it. It's opening you a d-file. It's winning you some time. So, for example, knight e4. Uh, there was one game. Uh, black played knight b4. Uh, this is a tricky move. Is bishop d2 a move as well? Here? Yeah, I guess, if you're happy to trade some pieces. So, again, bishop d2, bishop b4. You're trading a lot of pieces. Yeah, I guess it's playable. Maybe. Maybe it's possible something like uh, h4, h5 to play here. Why not? I asked the engine. Engine says is, is is great. But I think, again, this approach is more direct. You're used, using this knight to win even more time. Let's say after knight b4, queen e2. This is the best move so far. It's It hasn't been played. After queen e2, let's say black takes the pawn again he doesn't have to but what choice does he have let's say he takes the pawn c3 queen d5 yeah this might be the trick this might be the trick because you can really take the pawn on uh, i'm sorry take the knight on b4 right c takes on b4 is going to be bishop b4 um bishop b4 you have a problem you have a problem here on h1 so let's say Bishop b4, bishop d2, takes with the bishop, you have no pieces to recapture. You're going to lose some material. But again, remember, remember, we don't care about the pawn on d4. That's very, very important. So we just sacrifice it to win some time. Just, just sacrifice it. Just play a3. You can have it. So a3, knight a6, bishop g2. Yeah, this is this is a very interesting alternative. Instead of the castling long, there's a short castle. And again, you're enjoying a lot of space advantage, and the same king side attack is still proceeding forward. As long as you're playing aggressive. I'm gonna show you a sample line. So let's say knight c5 makes sense. Rook d1, very aggressive. Takes takes. Bishop f4. Bishop c2 and b4. So for example, this position. Again, black. Black has the extra pawn. But he cannot really castle. His pieces are feeling awkward. You're fighting for the space advantage. You have very strong bishops. So let's say he could play something like rook d8, c4. Short castle c5, queen e4, bishop c7, and black already is losing material. So again, it's extremely, extremely unpleasant to play this. So let's start it from the scratch. 
What did you say, Bishop G2? Bishop G2 instead of A3? I think there would be knight, knight D3 check. Just a second. Knight D3 and Knight C1. I don't think we want to give away the bishop just like that. We care about two bishops. This is an engine line. I use the engine. It's no secret. I checked with the engine. I checked with Stockfish. Stockfish is just killing black completely. You cannot really take the pawn on d4 without uh, having um, jumping under a train. So you're going for a fast development. This is not a forced line. Again, you have a very simple game. You want to play bishop e4, you want to play rook d1, you want to play h4, h5, g6. And all of that is just for one pawn. So let's say knight c5 here. Stockfish is totally not a fan of the Scandinavian. I can promise you that. There are some major lines. Stockfish just is giving plus two. <laughs> plus two, that's it. It's got a little lost. If you take the pawn, if you take the pawn. What if the queen was on b3? Uh, meaning here? Oh, yeah, that's that's a very risky choice. I understand it. Um, queen d2, rook b1, this is game over. This 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 cannot work. I mean, black is completely, uh, completely far behind the development. This cannot work. So I would imagine, I mean, okay, instead of this, let's say black will play, not knight c5. Okay, this is not forced. Let's say he could play something like... Um, I don't know. I mean, bishop e7. Bishop e7. I'm playing bishop e4. I'm playing very active. Uh, let's say he would play short castle. Uh, you are going to play rook d1. Let's say knight c5. Knight c5, bishop c5. Okay, let's imagine you reach this position. How you are going to stop the attack with h4? There's h5. There's bishop e5. There's rook d3. There is a huge attack. Yeah, terrible queen's not doing anything there. So, pff, how, how to play here? I mean, queen b6 something? You just ignore it. h5, g6, h6, queen e5, mate. So, black is begging you, trade queens. <laughs> but you are not going to trade queens, obviously. Something like queen a6. Maybe a nice idea for black would be try to sell you back to pawn. If you are going to trade queens, I'm going to give you a pawn. How about that? <laughs> That's a very popular approach by experienced players. I'm going to sell you back the pawn. Just, just let me live. <laughs> but you don't want to. Black let live. And um, yeah, so again, something like, I don't know, g6, um, h6, queen e5. This is looking awful. Game over. So e5, you already have to sacrifice something and you're already starting to convert your material advantage. So again, are you are you if you would ask me, is this obvious? Is this obvious from the start? It's not obvious. You're sacrificing the exchange. Um, what exchange? You're sacrificing the pawn for a lead. In development a very strong initiative and there might be some concerned voices who would say what if what if I won't play so good what if I won't find it what if I will be unable to play aggressive enough and um, get a very strong attack yeah that's that's possible but I think you are having already a great start a great lead start and uh, just, just keep in your mind these typical ideas that you are looking for a king's side attack. You're pushing forward g5, h4, h5, g6, h6. And your opponent is just going to at one moment understand that he's in deep trouble. So very good players, they're not taking these pawns. So let's say I'm playing with black. Like I explained, I'm bluffing. I'm bluffing with taking the pawn on d4. I know the consequences. So I, I won't take it. So again, which brings back to the question why we are protecting the pawn on d4 in the first place. So let's go back to this posi position. 
let's say queen of three uh, c6 uh, g4 okay let's not take the pawn g5 knight e4 uh, let's imagine let's say black just wants to finish the development here he's not gonna take the pawn right he sees okay this is a crazy attacker from Riga. <laughs> he he wants to annihilate me here in the opening. Let's just finish the development. So what would be the most logical moves here? They could be, for example, bishop e7. Or maybe just a second. Did I write it down? Yeah, let's say 97. Let's say 97. Bishop d2. Nothing changes. Long castle h4 h5 g6. Checkmate. Um, the best book to start studying? About what? Oh, that's a very huge question. I'm not sure if I can... You can write me in a whisper. Maybe I can, after the stream, answer to that. Otherwise, I'm going to divert from the topic now. Part of this, okay? Uh, so, here, for example, bishop d2, queen b6. <laughs> now, again, black is targeting the pawn on d4. What are you going to do? So, sometimes when I'm uh, teaching to my students, I'm saying, how are you... For example, what what is the right question here? So, if the right question... If, if, if you're asking yourself the question, how should I defend the pawn on d4? You'll never get the right answer. Because that's the wrong question. You're not supposed to protect the pawn on d4. You're thinking how I should charge for Of course, Long Castle, without thinking. Without thinking. Long Castle, easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So, again, queen takes on d4. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes. Again, I want to mention. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes by people who are playing gambits. They're looking for the forced win. There's no forced win. There's no mate in five. There's no win of the rook. I mean, don't even look for this. There is no bishop f4, there is no bishop a5, there is no, no no nothing. You're not even supposed to look at that. You're just aiming for advantage in development. The secret wish of every gambit player is get back the pawn back. Captain Flag, then don't play gambits. Don't play the gambits. Yeah, if you're playing the gambit with just a secret wish, just to win back the sacrifice material, just don't play it. <laughs> it's already the wrong approach. I think you're sacrificing the material to checkmate your opponent to demolish its defenses. C4, of course. C4. Um, let's say C4. Knight E5 is going to be Queen E2. The Queen is still here. Knight C5. Here. Boom, boom. Here. So, let's say Black somehow. That was a joke of Giri. Okay, I didn't know that. Let's say black somehow managed to trade off the knights. Your plan is still simple. H4. Nothing changes. Let's say B5. King B1. Trade. Trade. Here. And here. Again. Black still has the pawn. But can you please tell me where he is going to castle? Short, no, long, suicide. What should I do here? It's just out of the question, out of the moves. I mean, it's a terrible position. I can both target the pawn on c6, double the rooks on the c file. I can play h5, g6. How do you play here? This is a terrible position. But this might be a possibility. So let's say, okay, black realizes all of that is bad. So, let's say after queen of 3, c6, g4, e6, g5, knight e4. Let's say he is going to go with knight e7. Bishop d2 and bishop e7. Let's just get out of the open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's focus on development. Yeah, let's focus on development. So, bishop e7, long castle. How exactly are you going to continue your development? That's a very, very big question. I guess Long Castle, because this is a suicide. h5, bishop d3, g6, queen h3. 
It just looks terrible. Uh, black is million miles, miles away to even do something there. So I think Long Castle makes sense. Yeah, so Long Castle makes sense. So for example, something like Bishop e7, Long Castle, Queen, I don't know. By the way, you still have a pawn under attack on f7, by the way. How, how do you want to develop? So let's say Queen c7, c4, oh, uh, Knight b6, Bishop f4, <laughs> Uh, H4, just just resign here. <laughs> this is terrible. So even if Black somehow by miracle, yeah, if Black somehow by miracle he manages to castle long, White is enjoying the space. White is enjoying the top bishops. White is enjoying the center. So again, now you see the benefits of playing aggressively. You don't mind to sacrifice the pawn on d4 or another pawn as long as it's giving you enough time to open lines, open diagonals, and give you enough time to start an attack. I don't know what is less scary. Uh, out of um, out of question, out of good uh, suggestions here. So let's say let's say bishop b7. Long castle, short castle, h4. What do you play here? It already looks extremely scary. But how do you make a long castle? I already don't see how to do that. Maybe... Maybe here. Queen b6. I don't care about the pawn on d4. You can have it. Um, Maybe here. Long castle. c4. What do you play here? By the way, the pawn on f7 is under attack. By the way. It's still there. I could take it. I won't. Knight b4. <clears throat> a3. Push. You are just dominating the entire board. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know really where, where is a very good setup for black here. You know, I mean, I... I checked some of the I checked some of the uh, critical lines and for some reason I don't understand why this line is not really popular it's uh, very very straightforward uh, c6 g4 g5 sacked sacked pawn on d4 yeah maybe maybe black really I don't know maybe he really needs to take the pawn on d4 and then just uh, pray just pray it works yeah for example queen d4 Bishop e3, um, here, I already showed you this line, g5, long castle, boom, boom, and uh, maybe find some some way to hold this here. But uh, essentially being so far away in development, ah, by the way, I didn't show you this line. Knight c6, bishop c4, uh, bishop e7 here, if black would try to trade queens, yeah, this this I didn't show you. So let's say black is not going to castle. He's going to try to trade queens. At some moment, I don't know what's the best line. It's it's just an ugly line. I, I don't know, to, to be honest. If you see it, just tell it. I'll check it. Um, so let's say queen e5 takes, takes, bishop b5. You're already winning back to pawn. So this is, for example, short castle. Take, take. Black is looking to an ugly endgame. You have a very active pieces. This is a weakness on a7, doubling the rooks. You have the chance to organize uh, outside pass pawn at the queen side. What is black gonna do? Maybe, maybe this is somehow holding, but it's it's an ugly defense. Um Maybe black doesn't have to trade on f3. I don't know. Let's go back. So we are now talking about the line of um, uh, d4, knight of 6, knight of 3, bishop g4. Yeah, we're talking about this line now. Um, h3, again, bishop h5 is g4. Bishop g6 is knight e5. Yeah, maybe maybe this is somehow... But it looks ugly. You want to play h4. I already showed you this line. Knight e7, takes, takes, and g5. Again, the knight doesn't get to d5. It, it looks ugly. I mean, 
I, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe bishop g4 is not the best move here, but again, um... Bishop g4 here takes... takes what am I missing here? So c6, g4. Um, black could try to include h6 first. Maybe, yeah, maybe this... Uh, maybe about this line. Black could try to include h6, so that you cannot play immediately h4, because queen d4 is going to be a problem. You have a weakness on g4. Another pawn. But the thing about h6 is now black is never going to castle short. Never, ever. Always play h6. <laughs> um, yeah, just play bishop d2. Just don't care about the pawn d4. That's it. So I just want to play long castle h4, d, h4 g5. How do you play here? Take on d4. Okay, long castle. We are just pushing for opening the position. Um, I'm already, by the way, threatening some bishop h6. It's not like I care about the pawn. Uh, let's say something like queen b6, just push the way h4. So, um, e6, g5. Takes, 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 knight e5, g6. It's a very, very strong attack again, guys. I mean, um, I don't know. I, I really don't. I really don't know. Where's a, where's a good combination? Let me show you some other lines here. So, for example, black is not playing bishop g4, but bishop g4 is the most popular combination here. So, uh, I don't know. So let's say black is gonna play bishop f5. Ah, just a second. I think it starts with c6. Okay, let's start with c6. Let's just play positional chess. And uh, after c6, bishop c4. Now, if you're giving me enough time, black cannot play bishop g4 anymore because bishop g4 is bishop f7. Now you need to know this motive. That's a check. You win the pawn with the ruined pawn structure. So after bishop c4, there was one particular game. I, I checked. Jordan of Forest, he played uh, the rising uh, Dutch superstar. He played in one of the Tile Tuesdays uh, tournaments. He played bishop f5. Uh, wait, he was playing with white? Yeah, and he was playing against... Uh, okay, I, I don't know the player who played with black. And now already you know the idea. H3, bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, that would be a very similar approach. Now with the bishop and f5, boom, knight e5, boom, boom. Very big threats. How do you defend? So let's say e6, g4. Very aggressive, very straightforward. So g4, bishop g6, h4. You already recognize the idea. So h6 or h5. You are just gonna take on, on g6. Hey, all my checkmate, appreciate that. Yeah, I'm queen of three, maybe at some point. Again, remember, you don't care about the pawn on d4, right? So let's say knight e7. This is what was played in the game. Now h5 is gonna be slightly too slow. h5, knight takes, knight takes. I think there's something, just a second. What was after h5? Takes, takes, takes... Ah, there's some bishop e4. Okay, some, some crazy tactics. But to be honest, it also looks great. I don't know. It also looks great. Yeah, but after 97, after 97, what Jordan did, he took on d7. That's it. h5 now is a big threat. h5, bishop e4. f3, uh, not so good. So after f3, black is going to play bishop d5. He's very solid. Now we just take. We just take. Boom, boom. And that's it. So again, when you're looking at this position, can you imagine yourself that black is going to castle short? Never. Never. I mean, you have already pawns on g4 and h5 in play. I mean, you're going to castle long, right? Bishop d3, g5, g6, just checkmate. So I imagine uh, that black should play exactly as uh, Jordan's opponent did. Long castle. Queen e2. Here. 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 And here. And this. 
a strategically a very bad position. So White not only again, I think I'm already repeating myself a couple of times. White is enjoying a very powerful space advantage, advancement at the queen side, uh, two bishops and the center. So if Black is looking uh, for some kind of a counterplay, he needs to push c5, e5, open the position even more. So how do you play this line? It's just not a good line. So and Jordan easily win it, won it. Queen f3 here, king b1 here. Yeah, and the opponent just blundered. Yeah, the opponent just blundered on f7, but the position already is extremely unpleasant. Bishop c1, bishop b3, maybe c4, maybe d5, maybe position the bishop on c3. These are very nice targets. White is enjoying the space advantage and continue pressure black for a long time. All right, so this line is not good. What else is there? Um, yeah, bishop g4 with the cover. So there's a g6. About the g6. This is interesting, but I want to mention that it makes no sense with the queen d8. Because it makes sense. I'm going to cover you those lines afterwards with queen a5 and queen d8 as well. With the queen d8, then position the pawn on g6, bishop g7 is just worse. Now, there was a particular game I really liked how it was played out. Bishop g5. So, you're going to castle long. Nothing changes. No, 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 no. Don't position. By the way, by the way, about the bishop on c4, um, I think, I think you want to play bishop on c4 if, if you want to play knight e5 next. So here, bishop g7, knight e5, black is just in time to castle. You did not force him to play e6. Now, this is a very, very big difference. So again, let me go back, explain you. So for example, black plays bishop f5. Now you have a lot of time to play bishop c4. You want to play knight e5, you want to play g4. And now g6 is going to be slow. You're just playing knight e5. Hey, appreciate it for your sub. Thank you. So now knight e5 is going to be... Yeah, that's a big problem. e6 and boom. As they say, das vidanya. <laughs> that's it. You're gonna do that. Um, yeah, queen e2. Maybe at some moment you could do that. Uh, so maybe something like uh, bishop f5, bishop c4, maybe knight d7. Okay, okay. Maybe there is a way to try to survive this immediately. Maybe just take the bishop immediately. Uh, something like this. 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 Uh, I don't know, a four maybe? Yeah, it looks extremely uh, dangerous. F5, G5 is threatening you, gaining a lot of space advantage. Maybe you could even just take the bishop on G6 and just, uh, again, long castle. And the question is, where is going uh, the black king? So let's go. Let's go to the move G6. Yeah, white is always super active. And I think this is how white should always play against the Scandinavian defense. If your opponent is giving you two tempos, just like that, just play it aggressively. Just go for opening the position. Even sack the pawn. I mean, you don't care. Just open the position. Sack the pawn on d4 if necessary. Open lines. Open diagonals. Go for a very fast charging forward chess. So let's say g6. Bishop g5, this line I like the most against g6 setup. Now I'm going to show you this, this particular game. Um, bishop g7, queen d2. Um, if white, if black would play here, bishop g4 again. I, I see what it, I don't see what it changes. You're just playing h3. Boom, boom, long castle, nothing changes. Charge forward. About the queen on a5, I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk about that. So right now, what we have covered, we have covered the second move, knight of 6. We have covering queen d8, second move. I'm going to show you as well some ideas with queen a5 and queen d6. So g6, bishop g5, queen d2. And again, your plan is extremely simple. Long castle, h4, h5. 
Nothing changes. Hey, Vibhav. So let's say black is pushing a6. Bishop h6, that's a nice idea. For example, there was one game. Um, this is uh, this is a game between Alexander Grishuk against uh, young Krzysztof Duda. They played the blitz game uh, a couple of years ago. So check how Duda very quickly got the strategically lost position. So Duda was playing with black. <laughs> right. He played h6 to stop bishop h6 from happening. Here. Uh, I don't really understand why Grisha played bishop e2. To me, it seems to be extremely slow move. Long castle. And knight e5. White is charging forward. He doesn't care about opponent g2. It's just opening more lines, more diagonals, losing even more time, which black doesn't have. And black already is busted. Completely. So, the game progressed with knight of 6, c4, and the white is completely dominating all the squares. He is enjoying the space advantage, but still, somehow Grishik managed to lose this game. I mean, I don't know how. So that was a blitz game, so maybe there was a time scramble. But right after the opening, he was completely dominating the board. So after queen d2, you want to play bishop h6, you want to push h4, h5. If bishop g4 now, you could already think about knight e5. Counterattack the bishop on g4. a6, bishop h6, short castle. Yeah, maybe short castle wasn't the best, but it's nicely illustrating the idea that white can continue with. Take, take, h4. Very simple attack. Long castle. Bishop e2 and knight e5. I don't see how black is again enjoying this position. Yeah, and the king's side attack again is uh, starting. And the particular game finished with... Boom. Boom. Yeah, this is a very easy idea from the um, Sicilian dragon. Sack the h-pawn, open the h-file, charge forward. And boom, that's it. Boom. I, I don't see it really. <laughs> Black would have played it better. He just uh, got the brute checkmate. And uh, it just doesn't work. What if Black plays knight h5? Um, you know, I'll tell you honestly. The purpose, again, the purpose of this boot camp is not to uh, what is, what's the right word uh, to say that Scandinavian is unplayable that's not the purpose of this I just want to explain you the general ideas it's entirely possible that there is a setup where black somehow survives this for example on this particular line maybe not h5 maybe short castle wasn't there the point is I want to explain you the concept, the concept, how you should be treating to play against the Scandinavian. Just don't go for these uh, slow, short castles that just don't protect the pawn on d4 and use the best you can out of these extra tempos that your opponent is generously giving to you. So that's it. So again, that's not the purpose to... Uh, to completely debunk Scandinavian defense as unplayable opening. It's, it's a fun opening. Yeah, I have the biggest respect for, for people who play it, and I played it myself as well. I just uh, I just think it's a very, very risky approach. That's it. Right. So, yeah, maybe there's something like... I don't know. I mean, uh, bishop, bishop g4 is going to be knight e5. Already is unpleasant. You want to take, you want to push h5, you want to lift 3, long castle. Uh, very straightforward. And, um, yeah, so I think this entire approach against g6 is very, very straightforward. What about bishop c4? You want to play... Where, where, where do you want to play bishop c4? 
here. That's a different line. I, I see no reason why Knight of Tree is just not good. Hello, Ed Streamer, XDS Streamer. I already sort of proved that Knight of Tree, Bishop G4, H3, push G4, uh, you're just gonna enjoy it too much. So I'm just now showing you the alternatives. After, uh, why should I talk about Bishop C for Scurry Cannon? I mean, Knight of Three is working just fine. <laughs> I'm not afraid of Bishop G4. It's Bishop C4. You know about the bishop c4, sometimes black immediately pushes this a6 b5 plan. I think there was this line. Uh, just a second, what was it? Uh, bishop c4, a6, knight f3, b5, bishop b3, and c5. Wasn't this one? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, this was, this was black is doing okay. Yeah, black is doing okay here. And the point was trade queens, play e6, and then just uh, enjoy it. Yeah, again, I see no reason. Why should I include bishop c4 if knight of 3 is working just fine? So again, g6 is bishop g5, bishop g7, queen d2, you want to trade the bishops. And if black is stopping that, let's say, how do you stop that even? h6, bishop f4, long castle, knight e5, bishop c4, and uh, where's this guy going? Again, some people are concerned that there might be some big attack here. Yeah, definitely your opponent, I imagine, he's not going to sit around. He's going to seek his counterplay. But essentially, he's attacking you with two pawns. As far as I know, nobody's been checkmated yet with two pawns. Uh, Scurry, uh, did you follow what I was talking there for the last half an hour? <laughs> I already showed the lines after bishop g4. I mean, again, let me let me let me say the very very uh, let me repeat that. So knight of three, bishop g four, h three takes takes c six g four. I treat this as a very risky line for black, but again, it involves a pawn sacrifice, right? So queen d four, he can try to take, or maybe he can try to take a later point. My point is you shouldn't object. You are selling this pawn for a lot of uh, a great lead in development. It might backfire. You might not play active enough. It's entirely possible. Yeah. All right. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. I think with queen d8, uh, there should be no real questions. It's an interesting sideline. Uh, but I, I, I don't really see how... Yeah, I don't really see how black is going to enjoy their rising positions. Now, let's check what else is there. Uh, just a second. Now, we come to the main lines. And the main lines are queen a5 and queen d6. Yeah, yeah, let's go that. Let's go there. So, e4, d5, takes, takes, knight c3, and let's start with queen a5. I'm going to leave queen d6 as the last because I think that's the best. My, that's my opinion. Um, queen a5, it, it used to be, it used to be the, uh, the most popular continuation ever since Scandinavian was pretty much invented. And um, there's, again, very simple setup that you can continue. So we start with d4, d4, knight f3, uh, knight f6, and knight f3. And again, you get the same position. I already, I already explained you in the beginning. Should black play knight f6? Now we start with knight f3. And after queen d5, knight c3, we are switching to already the same lines. So queen d5, knight c3, queen a5, d4, knight f6, knight f3. And here, here we have some choices the old theory the old theory how people used to play is okay c6 i guess it makes sense uh bishop g4 
you're not going to see any surprise here. You already know the approach. Boom. 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 You want to play h4. You want to capture the bishop. Bishop e4, bishop d5. Yeah, it is entirely possible. e6. Bishop g2, position the bishop on the long diagonal. And h4. Yeah, some people used to play this line. They used to play this line. So h3, g4, knight e5, position the bishop on g2, open the long diagonal, and think about castle and long. So let's say your opponent is going to play... Let's say he's going to play knight e7. Take. Yeah, that's already the only move, right? Knight e7 is going to be h5. Yeah, the space advantage is just incredible. So let's say king, h5. Again, <laughs> I, I don't see how black is going to ever enjoy this position with the king walking. So you just continue normal development, normal development, g5. I think it's fair to say black is very close to busted. So you want to open the position, maybe 94 c4, maybe 95 c4, boom, 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 go very aggressive forward because the black king is walking in the center. Not good. Alternative line might be instead of this, um, h4, immediately bishop e4. Yeah, I think some people used to play this line. 97 h5, black would lose a piece there. I think you're talking about this line. 97 h5. Yes, h and g pawn storms to the king side. That's uh, one of the most dangerous idea. One of the most uncomfortable idea for any Scandinavian players. People don't play like this anymore. I'm just showing you as an information. Um, why don't they play it again? So after knight, I'm sorry. Yeah, bishop e4. I'm sorry, h4. And bishop e4. Takes, takes, queen of three. Yes, scary cannon, you're looking for alternatives. <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? I mean, there might be other moves there, but I'm just showing you what I treat to be the best. I'm not going to argue. There might be other possibilities. There is other possibilities as well. Nobody's arguing. Uh, you're attacking here with the mate. So knight e6, here, here, here. Black is busted. So again, the king is walking, you're enjoying space advantage, you are pushing, maybe d5 already might work at some moment, you're going aggressively after the black king. So, after h3, black might decide, okay, okay. I'm going to now take on f3. So if I recognize bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, knight e5, h4, bishop g2, blah, 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 blah. That, all of that is a big problem. Why don't we eliminate the problem in the first place? So black might play, I'm sorry, yeah, bishop f3. Take, and here. You already know. You already know the recipe. I'm not going to tell you anything new here. Yeah, do I need to continue? <laughs> yeah, so you're pushing g5. And again, you want to keep the queens on the board. So for example, maybe there's something like... Uh, maybe maybe knight d5. Yeah, maybe knight d5. Now the question is... Question is, did I just misplay that? So I don't want to trade queens. I don't want to trade queens. I mean, if if I if I'm forced, then I guess I misplay that. Maybe not immediately. G4. Okay, I'll start with King B1. Okay, okay. I'll start with King B1. So that there is no Knight D5, Queen D5. You already know the motive. H6, G6. You just push H4, G4, H5. If Black is gonna play H6, he can never castle short. That's a weakness. You can always target it. I think King B1 actually is more accurate. So let's say 
Uh, I don't know, a long castle, I guess. Is not what if if black plays ninety five? I don't know, queen a two. That's a problem, right? Yeah, king b one avoids any queen a two ideas exactly. Exactly. So, so I think that's a, just a useful move. You protect the pawn on a two, <coughs> and you already want to jump at the knight somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe some d5 ideas appear on the horizon to sacrifice the pawn for some some leading development. So uh, here, knight e5. Yeah, maybe already you can decline, decline the trade. Is it good? Well, what is good? There was queen a2, no? Ayaze. Hello, Hepper gotcha. Uh, so again, you want to push c4 and aim for aim for uh, space advantage. So I imagine Black would play something like Long Castle. And again, yeah, g4, I guess, or maybe ah wait, there's knight e4. Oh my goodness, that's so bad. Knight e4, bishop f4, knight g5. Oh my goodness. The pawn of seven looks very, very weak. The light square bishop, don't touch it if you're not sure. It's a simple rule. Don't touch the pieces, you don't know where to position them. Um, the reason, the reason why we are developing the pieces, you know, actually, this is a different topic. I mean, I could talk about this, how to properly develop the pieces. Maybe I already touched that. In one of the previous boot camps is the general rule is this you don't touch the pieces you're not sure you don't know about the last square bishop on f1 should it go to e2 should it go to d3 should it go to c4 you don't know that yet what you know is you should fight for the space advantage uh, pressure the knight on f6, play g4, h4, g5, pressure it forward after knight e5 play knight e4, play c4, pressure for more space and then maybe you'll find a good square for the light square bishop. The last thing you need to do is to play bishop e2 and say, check, I've developed my light square bishop. That's, that's a bad idea. You don't want to do that. Just, just play with the pieces you know which should be developed. The light square bishop and f1, you don't know it yet. Right. So... That's a bad idea. The entire bishop g4, nobody plays like that. Now people started to play c6, bishop c4, and bishop f5. Yeah, this is far more popular approach. The modern approach. To position the bishop immediately on f5 because black perfectly understands the consequences of pushing white's kingside pawns h3, g4, knight, e5. So this is why people immediately position the bishop on f5. You're going to need to digest information. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess it could be, could be difficult immediately to understand that, but I'm going to upload, of course, the video later on my YouTube channel so you can re-watch it. It's going to be available <laughs> as, as my other boot camps. No, no, no sacrifice. Don't sacrifice. So here starts some serious theory. Uh, bishop f5, bishop d2. Um, bishop d2, the idea normally is to jump with the knight on d5. To jump with the knight on d5, trade on f6 perhaps. Uh, other idea is to play queen e2, long castle. And you're still thinking about these ideas to play at the king side. But now it really, it really matters how black is going to play. Black normally plays e6. Yeah, that's the main move. But let's say black is concerned. He's concerned of your knight's jump. Yeah, he is. Yeah, it looks, looks ugly. Yeah, this knight e5. So let's say he's going to play something like queen c7. 
already based on what you know you can make the right decision right now and it's not short castle and it's not a3 and it's not h3 and it's not bishop e3 or bishop b3 those are very slow moves you recognize the most aggressive continuation i'm gonna allow you to think i'm pretty sure you can you can do that yep 95 95 no 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 95 that's one, that's two. Uh, the pawn on C2 is going to be sacrificed in some other lines. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe here it's not not uh, not the most direct continuation. So E6, G4, boom. Uh, Bishop E4. To be honest, I didn't really check it. I guess you can just take it. They can play something aggressive like Bishop F4. Queen e2 or queen f3, long castle. Looks uh, great. I don't know. I didn't check it. But let's say if he does bishop g6, h4, and knight e7. Because this is one of the uh, thematic ideas. Again, how black is countering your g4, h4. And after h5, he wants to... Wait, what does he want to do after h5? I didn't check it. Ah, he just takes and take with the check. Okay, okay, okay. So, again, you take on d7. Yep, you just take on d7. h5 is the next move. Queen d7, h5. Bishop e4, trade. And just protect the pawn on d4. You know, maybe here, at some moment, I hope you're not going to be... Uh, overly take it, take my advice um, uh, at every single situation. I'm saying that sacrificing the pawn on d4 early is probably a great idea. It doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice it at every given moment. So I hope you will understand that at some moment it's okay to sacrifice the. Uh, I'm sorry to defend the pawn on d4. And bishop e3, queen f3, and again, this is a great line. So this has some direct resemblance to the game I was showing Jordan Van Forest. He was playing this blitz game against... Uh, who was it? I already don't remember. What about bishop c5? Or, there's no bishop c5, no. The entire line, this is not a good line for black. What? You mean here? No. Uh, it's it's very important to understand that bishop c4 is instrumental idea to prepare knight e5 to prepare g4. It comes together. That's the idea. You're playing it bishop c4. You're preparing knight e5. You're preparing g4. Without without bishop c4, you cannot do that. Because 95 is just going to come one tempo slow. Yeah, bishop... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, queen c7 is not good. Yeah, queen c7 immediately you can launch. 95, g4, h4, boom, 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 boom. So he might try instead queen d8. Now after queen d8, 95 is possible. But there's a pawn on d4 under attack now. So now we return to the idea to play queen e2. And this is a lovely trap. So now the question is, how do you feel about taking the pawn on c2? I can tell you that's a very bad idea. Normally, people who are playing the Scandinavian defense... No, no, not bishop... No, no, not bishop f7. Bishop f7 is not a threat. You are preparing to castle long. You're preparing to play knight e5. You're preparing to play g4. So queen e2 is a preparation move. So let's say bishop c2. Castle with a tempo? 
I, I don't understand your question, Saptavsha. So, 95? Black is just busted. Yeah, so H5 is incoming big threat. No, no, just play H4. If you sacrifice the bishop on F7, it's not going to be enough. It's a very lovely idea, but it's not enough. You need to prepare an attack. If black now plays h5, you just happily take on g6. And whatever, just, I don't know, play bishop d3, play queen d3, play long castle, you choose. So I, I don't know what's the best continuation here. Yeah, so... This pawn on c2, again, you have to understand, this pawn on c2 loses black's available time. It's again the same approach as for taking the pawn on d4. Black is losing time. You don't mind. And again, you don't sacrifice the pawn on c2 immediately to regain it back. That's not your purpose. You're sacrificing the pawn for some initiative. So, queen e2. Uh, yeah, so this is bad because of knight e5, let's say e6. Yeah, now after e6, now you have your knight f7. Now you have it. And the mate on the board. Yeah, so, so it doesn't really work. It cannot work. So let's go back. And... So black cannot really take again on c2. So he needs to finish developments, right? Why not queen e2 in the queen c7 line? That's a very good question. Because knight e5 is more direct. That's why. Knight e5 you can play it immediately. In the, in the queen d8 line, knight e5 e6, the pawn on d4 is extra under attack. So this is why we start with queen e2. If you were asking if after queen c7, you, could you have played queen e2? Sure. Yeah, you could have. But this is the best line. Yeah, so let's say e6. Long castle. And again, you want to play knight e5, g4, h4, etc. Um, why is it important to play knight e5 forward castling? Maybe it's not really a big difference. You know, I I don't really uh, I don't really want to um, focus so much on the order of the moves. So more important is the idea. So you play queen e2, you play long castle, you play knight e5, you play g4. Maybe the order of the moves it doesn't really matter. Maybe. Yeah, I, I didn't really investigate it so much. I'm not publishing here encyclopedia. <laughs> I'm not publishing a book. I mean, I could write a book about how to play against Scandinavian, but uh, maybe sometime, sometime later. Just I'm. This is why I'm doing a bootcamp here. Uh, yeah, all of my bootcamps are uploaded on my YouTube channel. Right. Okay. So let's say here Black is going aggressive a5. Yeah, this is one of the one of the things which concern a lot of people. This counterplay. But it's it it makes sense. What do you expect? That your opponent is going to sit and watch? I mean, how do you annihilate his Scandinavian? Of course, he is gonna seek a counterplay at the queen side. The name of this line is uh I don't know, Scandinavian Queen A5? I don't know what's what's the name of this line. Yeah, there's not nothing. I just play four. Just play a4. B takes knight a4, whatever. The attack is gone. You're just going to play knight e5. Yeah, just play a4. Knight e5, g4, etc. b4, knight b1. That's it. And again, nothing changes. Nothing changes. You're charging forward. I don't care about the pawn on d4. So let's say queen takes on d4. Rook e1. How do you play here? So the black queen has to retreat. There's some bishop retreats. Knight uh, e7 would be knight c6. So queen b6, boom. Bishop e6, game over. 
So black didn't even survive to this. Yeah, so here knight e7 is going to be knight c6. You want to play g4. So how do you play? I, I don't know. I mean, h, something h5? h5? I don't know. f3? h3? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's the main... This is just a bad line. I'm just showing you how to properly counter a bad line. This is not the main line. I'm just showing you... Yeah, how to... If your opponent is prematurely retreating against the knight e5, if he plays queen c7 or he plays queen d8, he keeps the queen on a5. That's the main theory. So he plays e6. Now, um, there's been a change in theory as far as last time I checked this line. Because when I was... Bishop g5... Yeah, it may be val valid, but it's a different setup. The bishop belongs on d2. Bishop c4, bishop d2, queen e2, knight e5, g4. That, that is the setup which I'm proposing. If there is another great setup, okay, I, I don't argue. Um, yeah, so here I, I grew with the knowledge that queen e2 is the best move here. But I last checked the database, how people are playing right now, and knight e5 appears to be stronger. Knight e5, queen d8, and knight f6. And about this position, black normally has two moves. If he plays g takes. Now this is when the crushing is finished. There is no crush anymore. You are just enjoying a good position, a nice positional game. So it might follow something like bishop b3, Queen e2, and keep an eye. Uh, Nicky gives knight e5. Yeah, um, you know, I just I just checked the database, what people are playing uh, lately. I used to play queen e2 all my life. So here's a nice idea you, that you can keep in your mind to trade the light square bishop. Long castle, long castle g3, take away some f4 squares, take, take, and h4. Now, this position is not fun for black, because I suggest here to play it slow, play it carefully. Again, you're enjoying the center, you're enjoying the two bishops, and maybe in an endgame, you can create a passed pawn with g4, h5. So, black is solid, but he's worse, solidly worse. Th that's the way I treat. That's the way I treat this line. So I imagine something like a five, bishop g5, c3, king b1, and this is where serious players they start to play. But I would say that black already is not having a, a great, great starting position. All right, let's go back. So instead of this, I don't know what Nengi really uh, recommends here. So I just want to show you one interesting line. Uh, instead of knight e5, there's a nice block. Uh, there's an alternative queen e2. Queen e2 with the idea to meet bishop c2 with d5. Yeah, this is a nice trick. Everybody sort of knows this already. But the problem with queen e2 is that black is not obliged to play bishop takes and c2. That's it. Again, he cannot really take. And after c takes, bishop b5, knight e4, this is oh so terrible. Okay, that's an alternative. I don't want to focus that on that too much. So knight e5, knight f6, queen f6, and queen e2. Um, again, bishop takes on c2. I think black is losing a lot of time. So something like, I guess, rook c1. And d5. And again, you're going extremely aggressive forward. I'm recommending knight e5. Definitely. Instead of queen e2. And uh, c takes on d5 already is a suicide. Yeah, bishop b5 check. Knight e7. And I don't know, where's the, where's the fast, fastest wing here? I guess uh, takes and queen b5. 
Why not bishop g5? I don't know. Bishop g5. Yeah, it's possible. Bishop g5. Ah, there's some computer lines. Bishop b4 check. Queen f5. Now, this is not good. This is not good. So, queen f6. Queen e2. This is a bad line. I think it's... Uh, I think it was... Uh, maybe there's bishop c3 as well. You know, I haven't really studied it so well. And now d5 is a huge threat. How do you stop that? This is bad for black. How do you stop that even? I mean, I just want to take. I want to push. So, queen g... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe queen g6 something. And d5 again. Looks terrible. Black is just uh, with zero development. C takes, bishop b5, knight c6, knight e4, queen takes, and rook f1. So black is losing something here already. Knight c6, knight c2 is a huge threat. I, I don't know what looks better. Maybe g takes is a more safe move. But again, after queen takes on f6... Queen e2, black doesn't have to take. Knight e7, long castle. You're already threatening to play d5. So let's say bishop g4, d5. Black is worse. For example, take, take. And again, white is just attacking the queen side. So the queen side is wide open for incoming attack. And you don't care about the pawns. So for example, queen takes on h2 already is a suicide because of bishop e5. This pawn on h2 doesn't matter. All that matters is the king's safety. So queen b5 is already killing the game here. And queen e5 is going to be bishop b7 discovered check. Here, queen b5, boom, and shake hands for a nice game. So that's it, that's a mate on the board. So black was having no chance to survive this just because he thought he can take the pawn on h2. Yeah, this is one of the sample lines. Um... Yeah, so this bishop g4 is slightly slow. And uh, there's this line, very interesting line, actually. Yeah, there might be a Bowdens man. So knight b6, bishop g5, queen g6, h4, h6. Now you imagine, I open the database. And there's something like several GMs can play this line. Can you believe this is a forced losing line? <laughs> Black is losing by force. Yeah, it starts with knight e5, obviously. Knight e5, queen h7. Just imagine how you should continue here. No, oh, I mean, the engines, they were not developed uh, so strong. G4, bishop c2 is not good. There are even some very good GMs can play this line. Although some years ago, when the chess engines uh, were not developed so well, but this already looks extremely dangerous for black. And there's a novelty which is killing black immediately. It's not obvious, but I, I imagine this is something that uh, black should be paying attention to. And I mean white should be paying attention to. Because white is ahead in development, you need to open the position. No, 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 no. You need to open the position. How do you open the position? Knight of seven is uh, too straight. Maybe, maybe by the way, knight of seven works. I didn't check it. Yeah, just d5. Yeah, just d5. That's it. Boom. E takes is suicide. C takes is suicide. Uh, knight e5 just takes. So, what does he have here? Okay, let's say it takes on c4. Right, takes on c4. Take. 
the king is all alone. He has no chance. No chance to survive this. B5, C7. Um, take on E5, which is just going to be a mate. Yeah, that's a mate. Boom. That's it. So you cannot do that. Um, maybe here. And there is a lovely shot. Queen of three. <laughs> Queen A8 is a threat. Queen C6 is a threat. Bishop E4 is Queen of seven. That's it. I mean, there's no chance. Completely annihilate. Yeah, Queen H7 is completely out of the game. So D5 makes perfect sense, right? You're going for the kill while you have all the pieces in the attack. So, yeah, but check the check the database. People are playing this. I mean, maybe they already know this, that this is a bad line, but um, it just uh, kills the game. So let's say Knight C4, D takes Knight D5. And Queen B5 is deciding the game. These pieces, they are not protecting the king against Queen B5. Um, the most beautiful line was H takes, takes, and takes. No, 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 just just a piece down, just a piece down. But there is more. <laughs> Bishop b5. Uh, a nice line. So you want to play uh you want to play uh bishop takes on c6. Rook c8 is going to be ah black is a queen down. Rook c8, I don't know what is rook c8. Uh let me check it. Rook c8. Boom, boom, boom. I don't like Black's chances here. It looks like his entire king side is shot away from the attack. Yeah, activity above, oh, above all else. Exactly. Morphe said it nicely then. So here's the beautiful line after bishop e4. Take. Now you take it. And don't take the queen, but take the bishop on e4. And that's it. Black can just resign. So maybe the best chance is to do something like trade, trade, here, queen c6, and a winning attack. Okay, I mean, this this is just a sample line. Just a sample line to illustrate how you should be playing against the Scandinavian. What is after c takes? I just showed you. Uh, queen c6, king e7, and the attack continues. Maybe there's even a forced mate, I don't know. These pieces are completely disconnected. All right, uh, let's move forward. Again, this is, I'm not um, um, debunking the entire Scandinavian, it's just an interesting line. It's a uh, main line. So, knight of three, knight of uh, c6, bishop c4, bishop d2, knight d5, trade. Yeah, g takes maybe is more careful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a recapping then. So queen f6, it makes more sense not to ruin the pawn structure. Now queen e2, this is bad. Maybe because of bishop c3. Yeah, I guess bishop c3 is the most dangerous. With the threat of d5. There's many great moves after bishop c2. Rook c1, d5 looks great. I don't know which is the best. I mean, <laughs> So knight e7, long castle. I mean, obviously here, black is not obliged to play knight b6. So you are not having a wrong impression that, that I just found a refutation for the Scandinavian. So black could play something like queen d8. But queen d8 is d5. Again, you're pushing for a very fast development. d5, c takes, bishop d5. Maybe this holds somehow. Knight e4. Boom. In, in this spirit. In this spirit, just, just treat the entire opening. Going for the kill while, while black is... Uh, still in the center. Again, there might be other combinations as well. I don't know what is good, it's just the entire line is uh, fishy. 
So just look at this position. I mean, black is down by two tempi. He's missing two tempi. I mean, bishop e7 shortcuts, he's missing two tempi. Are you ready? You are ready to start the king's head attack. Um, maybe there's another move here. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe you can, instead of the d5, maybe you can play knight e5 as well. Knight e5 takes, takes, and g4, f4, f5 looks extremely good. Yeah. So, that looks good. You're organizing a tournament. Please send me a message either on Discord or uh, Twitch Whisper. I'll check it out. Thank you. Um, right. Okay, so let's move forward. For black of... What? What's a good move after long castle? How do you make a long castle? 95 takes, queen of six, queen e2... You mean long castle jumps under bishop g5. So maybe maybe he could try to play something like h6. h6 to stop any bishop g5 and keep the chances alive to castle both sides. But again, I mean, you could treat this uh, many ways. Maybe bishop c3 open the position. Queen, I don't know, d8 d5 c takes rook d5 shake hands that's it again black didn't manage to get out of the opening let's say bishop e7 and rook d7 i guess yeah this is killing this is killing and not good uh scandy again i already stressed this a number of times scandinavian is a great opening if used properly at the right time but i don't see how very strong players would be playing scandinavian in a classical time control you you're seeing what i'm seeing right so uh, i think very good players know this uh, this is more popular at the club level um but uh, still i guess it i guess it depends on the taste right I, I very much enjoy. For example, if you would um, give me a choice, let's say I'm playing with what e4, and I'm I'm supposed to play against Petrov. <laughs> How do you destroy the Petrov? It's an it's a, a disaster. I mean, it's so difficult to crash through Petrov, the Karakan, uh, all of those super solid openings. Then comes the Scandi. <laughs> They're like, thank you. Thank you, thank you for playing this because you're effectively giving me a couple of tempos right after the opening. About the community six. Yeah, community six, I believe, is the best. Yes. I don't think he's gonna play in the classical time control. He perfectly knows what might happen. And blitz? Sure. Yeah. People play blitz. Yeah. Blitz rapid. Uh, queen d8, queen a5, uh, queen d6, knight of six, whatever, don't they play? Because perhaps with the with the idea that this is an easy to play position, and even even if you get a worse position, you can always blitz it, right? You can always flag, you can always outplay. In classical game, ah, that's an entirely different story. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just doing this to send a message, right? I can play whatever I want. I mean, again, I have the greatest respect for people who have worked on the Scandinavian defense and trying to make it work, it it has a lot of venom, definitely. Because, again, I might be saying exactly the same, how to crush the Dutch defense. I am, I'm a big Dutch defense uh, fan. I've played Dutch defense uh, for, for years. It's a bad opening. Again, I'll tell you honestly, it's not good. But the reason why I'm playing this is because it's unorthodox. People don't know how to properly react. So would I play this at the GM level as a main weapon? No. I mean, no way I would do that. I'm, 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 I think I'm enough smart to do that. And I'll choose something, something more solid, something 
uh, with a good reputation. But I would use, uh, for example, the Dutch defense at the right time. Let's say I need to win. Let's say I'm playing against a player who is known to have problems with unorthodox positions. Then, for example, the... Uh, uh, the Dutch defense is fine. I think the same applies for the Scandinavian defense. Yeah, it, it's unorthodox. So if you don't know exactly how aggressively to counter it, black is emerging just fine. But if you're playing this against a serious player, against a serious, in a serious time control, you're playing the Scandinavian all the time, you're just going to be annihilated. I think so. That's my personal opinion. Right. All righty. So, uh, yeah, among those players, but GMs might play against 2,200, 300, yeah, maybe, maybe. But there are other, there are other interesting openings. I mean, there's Sicilian, uh, we're not giving a center just like that. And there's the French, there's the Carrick and etc. So, Scandi is more for Blitz, I think. That's my opinion. So, again, I apologize if there's a... Uh, there's a big Scandi fan out there, and I just sort of crushing your spirit playing this candy. It's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. And if you are seeing and you don't agree with what I'm showing there, it's completely fine, right? Again, the main purpose of this bootcamp is to explain how you should tackle this candy in the right way. That's it. Not to debunk it. <laughs> right okay let's go let's go back um yeah let me let me perhaps switch over to the um uh, queen d6 lines because this again i showed you uh this is the main line 95 queen d8 knight of six queen of six queen e2 um so d5 is a big threat uh maybe queen d8 oh wait this already is bad no just a second. Ooh, what about d5? Ouchie, ouchie, ouch. What's happening here? <laughs> so d5, c takes, bishop b5, check. Yeah, this is a very common motif. Uh, knight d7 is knight e5, knight c6 is game over. Okay, maybe not game over, but black has to sacrifice an exchange. Yeah, so maybe G takes is more careful. But again, I showed you. G takes, bishop b3. Ah, by the way. By the way. I uh, I want to immediately mention. Don't please mix up. Because if you're going to play here, queen e2. Black can actually take the pawn on c2. Might be still possible, but this idea of d5... Doesn't work anymore. C takes, bishop b5, knight e7. You don't have knight e5. That's the difference. That's the difference. The pawn is standing on f6. You cannot do that anymore. Just don't mix it up. So after g takes, this pawn probably needs protecting. So bishop b3 and then only play queen e2. Okay, let's go forward to the line of queen d6. Um, ah, it's the same line. Okay, just a second. So e4, d5, takes, takes, knight, c3, and queen, d6. I believe this is the main line. I believe this is the best. The best continuation. Maybe, uh, maybe working together uh, with... Um, Queen a5. And again, your approach is the same. So d4. Knight f6. And knight f3. This is what you're going to play pretty much against anything. With the exception if black plays knight f6 the second move. Then you start with knight f3. There was one major difference. Uh, this already explained. But I will do a quick recap in the end of my boot camp. Um, let's say knight of six, and here there are a number of continuations. Black can start to go aggressive. 
And this line used to be very popular some time ago. So a6, there's c6, and there's g6. Any bishop g4, you're already playing h3. So let's start with, let's start with, uh, what should I start? Let's say a6. a6 comes directly with a threat to pressure the pawn on d4. So black wants to play. Knight a6, bishop g4, long castle. This line used to be quite popular some years ago. Nobody's playing it right now. And the reason is simple. What do you think is the reason? <laughs> I'll let you answer the question. I already explained. Black is bluffing to win the pawn on d4. Yep, white ignores. That's <laughs> that's the idea. Yeah, that's the idea. White ignores. Hey, AXT chess, you missed that. Yeah, you're going to have to watch it then later from YouTube. Yeah, Atomic Murphy is going to be on YouTube as well. So you're just ignoring the pawn. So let's continue. Instead of the long castling, here long castle, I guess it doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense because black is going to castle long. Now I propose to play g3. A bishop f4 is a threat. Bishop g4 and bishop g2. We are going to make a short castle. So knight c6, usually black plays like this. Short castle. Bishop f3 is not good. Bishop f3, bishop f3, and black is not even threatening with anything. Knight e4, you take the pawn on, on b7. Queen d4 loses the queen for black because you play bishop takes on c6, and black loses the queen. So instead of this, black usually castles. So again, now it's very important to understand. Black is bluffing with your fear. There's the pawn on d4. Be afraid. <laughs> now, of course, you don't want to be afraid. You don't want to start to defend it. So the last thing you want to do, for example, here, to play extremely passive. Yeah, something like bishop e3. Yeah, that's, oh my goodness. That's, that's so, so wrong. Because black just plays e5. I just enjoy it's an excellent position. Exactly what black wanted. He wanted you to lose this time. Um, no, there's something far better. You want a you want a pawn? Take it. <laughs> Just take it right away. Black cannot do that. If he takes, take, 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 take. There's knight g5. The pawn on f7 is under attack. The rook on d5 is under attack. So this is clearly worse. And after rook f5. F3. That's it. Yep. Black is losing something already. Maybe the exchange for the pawn is just not good. You don't want to do that. So people supposedly know this. Uh, let's say after d5. Again, the pawn on d5 is gone. You don't need a pawn. You are sacrificing it to open the position. So after d5, black is playing knight b4. Yeah, I used to play this line myself with black, so I know what I'm telling there. So, uh, knight b4, h3, again, you want to take, okay, let's take, 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 95, 95, 95, hooray, black managed to win a pawn, yeah, but the entire queen side is wide open, so, queen e2, let's say something like e6, rook d1, how do you play here? Extra pawn. So maybe queen b6, c4. Knight f6, take. And yeah, I don't know what's really the best continuation here. You're aiming for uh, queen side attack. Maybe a3, b4, maybe rook b. No, 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 no. You want to play a little more aggressive. 
Stream is black? What? Everything is good? Can you confirm? You see fine? Okay. So you can already play bishop e3, bishop c5, and just take the pawn on b7. Okay, if you're really, really concerned. But to be honest, uh, I think you can aim for more. Maybe just play rook b1. Rook b1, b4, c5, b5, c6. So for the pawn, you're enjoying a very good attack. So it's not good. So black might play instead of this, after h3, bishop h5. Here, here, I insist, <laughs> I insist taking the pawn on d5. Now what do you do? You're going to have to take the pawn on d5, otherwise, I mean, how do you finish the development? So, 95, 95, 95, rook d1. The position is opening, inevitably. So, let's say queen f6, g4, c4. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I'm out of good moves here. I don't know any good move here for black. Maybe... Knight f4 already loses by force. Just uh, take, take, queen d2. That's a check and you lose a piece. It doesn't work. So where do you position your pieces? Maybe knight e3. Take, take, and queen e3. Black is lost. He is without a development. The entire queen side is wide open. Queen a7, queen a8, rook d1. They're killing moves. Open positions are easier to play. You hard hard play? Maybe you should study the open positions more. I don't know. So again, all of this, um, all of this uh, dangerous attack is just for one pawn, and Black is down something like four tempos to finish the development. So this is losing. So instead of this. Instead of this, black might try to bail out. I, I imagine, I imagine I'm bluffing with this line. So I'm playing uh, a6, knight c6, bishop g4, long. I'm bluffing with you. I'm bluffing with the threat to take the pawn on d4. And I see, as you know, I might take the easy way out. I'll be streaming, I don't know, maybe half an hour still. So, 95 black might try to get out of this position, but this leads to a forced line. Boom. 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 And no matter how you look at this position, black is suffering. The position is symmetrical, black is still down in development. And the line goes, I think it was bishop d6, here, threatening with knight c5, here, here, boom, boom. Okay, I mean, this line is not really that significant. The, the bottom line, the bottom line is black is suffering here as well. Maybe he holds this. Maybe he doesn't. I played this line already back in 2013, maybe, with black. No fun, definitely. It just changed my entire approach to this, because I was playing this kind of maybe in black as well. So I stopped. I simply stopped playing a6. And the way I treat this, this is why people don't play a6 anymore, because of this line. Because of this line, g3, bishop g2, and just sack the pawn on d file. You always lose against this line. <laughs> Black is not doing good here. I can promise you that. Yeah, here one little important uh, nuance is. 
is don't rush with h3. Yeah, there's some nuances, but this is the best line. This is the best line. So instead of this, what else is there? Black might play g6. Black might try, try to play g6, bishop g7. Uh, you might remember I mentioned this line against queen d8. Queen d8 and then g6, bishop g7. I was proposing you to play bishop g5, queen d2, long castle. To be honest, when I was uh, looking at this position, I couldn't really understand why not here as well. I think it makes perfect sense to, pl to play against queen d6 with the same approach and g6. Bishop g5, queen d2, long castle. But maybe the difference is the control of the f4 square. Yeah, knight b5. Yeah, I'm going to propose you to play knight b5 just because this is the simple choice. This is the simple choice. You can always uh, take queen b6. And now comes the tricky move, knight a3. So the knight inevitably goes to, c, uh, to e5 through c4. Knight c4, knight e5, and just enjoy your game. Uh, what you have to understand here, um, the entire reason why people, do you understand why people are playing the Skandi? People are usually playing the Scandinavian to have the typical pressure against the pawn on d4. So after this boot camp, you'll understand. You are not... No, no. Come on, guys. Scandi is fun opening. It's a fun opening and people who are playing this, uh, they I'm sure they know what they're doing. But I think you're just gonna... You're just gonna... Fun, but... Not bad, but... Risky. I would say it's risky. You're jumping under attack. So it's like a provocative continuation. I think White is doing excellent in all of the lines if you're playing it aggressive enough. And one of the reasons why they're playing the Scandinavian, they are pressing the pawn on d4. Yeah, it's a valid defense. Absolutely. So they're pressing the pawn on d4. And this is why knight b5 is... Oh, just a second. Knight b5 is the simple way. You're just removing the knight from c3 and protect the pawn on d4 with c3. Um, bishop f4. Yeah, bishop f4 is possible. That's a slightly different line. Now you have some problems with the pawn on, um, on b2. c6 is incoming. The pawn on b2 is under attack. I'm not so sure I need my bishop on, on f4. So the simple choice is knight a3, knight c4, and knight e5. That's it. And you're playing against... <laughs> you're playing against this bad guy. It's not doing anything. So you're threatening with knight g5, fork ideas. Let's say knight e7, bishop c4, knight e5, knight e5. I think this is a great start. So you're enjoying a space advantage... You're enjoying a free development. And this is an entirely playable line for black. I'm not going to say you're able to crush your opponent. But black doesn't have the typical pressure against your pawn on d4, which is now easy to protect. And thus you're just getting a better position after the opening. right? So maybe now there's a million plans how you can play. Maybe short castle, rookie one, queen e2, bishop f4. So I believe... Uh, this should be the main objective of the Scandinavian defense, this line. So queen d6, maybe queen a5 as well. Yeah, so um, it's look, it looks good. I, again, this is not mandatory. You can play c4 as well. c4, c6, knight c3, uh, bishop g4. But you know, here... Black has this uh, typical counterplay against the pawn on on d4. Yeah, so it's completely fine. You can play bishop e2, bishop e3, and again claim a space advantage, just a fine position. 
But I think, I think this knight a3 is just like a simple recipe and just reposition the knight on e5. I just play a good game. Bishop c4, queen e2, bishop g5, short castle. Just enjoy a good game. So what else is there after knight f3? Again, bishop g4 is, I imagine, not good. h3, bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, knight e5. You already know this. There's no surprise here. Um, after, ah, wait a second. There was this tricky line. Yeah, there's this tricky line. I remember that black was sacrificing the pawn at some moment. Just a second, where was it? I think it was... I already forgot. Was it bishop before? Ah, this wasn't so easy. Yeah, this wasn't so easy. But the simplest approach, the simplest approach after knight e7 is don't fall for any knight b5 ideas. Just take on g6. Here, bishop g2, c6, and now you're opening the position. You're opening your bishops. d5. You don't allow black to play e6. Take, take, and that's just it. You're already playing a better end game with very strong bishops. Right. Um, so bishop g4 is not so good. Uh, again, bishop f3, queen f3, c6. I imagine, again, you don't care about the pawn on d4. I'm pretty sure you can already try to play... Um, can you play g4 here? I didn't really check it. Ah, oh, wait, I think you can just play bishop f4. Yeah, that's an extra tempo. And uh, bishop f4, queen takes on d4, is bad because of knight b5. And this line I showed in the beginning of the boot camp. So knight b5, c takes, and bishop b5. Black is already very close to lost. There was a, there was a forced line. Knight e7, queen takes on b7, rook d8, and bishop c7. No matter how you look, black is doing just bad. So he cannot really take. And if he doesn't take, you're playing long castle, g4, g5. Again, nothing changes. So, what else is there? Yeah, I guess there's just g6. Ah, wait a second. I didn't show you c6 at all. Yeah, c6 I didn't show you at all. After c6, I think you can do the same approach as against a6. You can play g3. Bishop f4, bishop g2. Here, 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 and again, remember, if your opponent is playing aggressively, he is pressuring that pawn on b2, you don't care. You don't care. Take it. It opens more lights. It opens more diagonals. So after a3, queen takes on b2, just play queen d2. Rook b1 is a big threat. How do you deal with that? Let's say queen b6. Here. How do you protect the pawn on b7? Queen a6 maybe. Knight e5. And black can resign. So all of his problems started when he became greedy. He started to take pawns and not focusing on development. So... Not, not a good idea. Black is completely busted at the queen side. So queen b4 is not good. Let's say queen d8. And again h3. Nothing changes. And I imagine this. This is the most critical position if a good scandy player gets out of the opening. Something like this. So white is getting two bishops, white is getting a pawn center, 
but black is solid. Yeah, the B po B2 pollen is very often, very often poison. So this particular position can be reached by a number of uh, continuations. After queen d8, I wasn't able to replicate this position because I was pushing for h3, g4, g5. I think this position arises after queen d6. Just a second, let me show you. I think that's the best move. So again, although after after c6, of course, there's a number of different continuations here. You can play h3, bishop c4, queen e2. You can play knight e5, bishop e4, etc. I'm just proposing to play g3 to keep it simple. Very easy development. Uh, bishop h5 is going to be again g4, knight e5. You already know the pattern. There's no news here. And if he plays something like knight e7, take the bishop here and just play for some space advantage. Yeah, so I imagine this could be one of the critical positions. Uh, your idea, you're aiming for opening the position. So I imagine this knight, knight e2, c4, knight c3, bishop g3, and try to open the position, maybe a3, b4, b5, you're trying to open your bishop. And watch out your opponent rerouting the knight to g6. This, this could be quite tricky. So if bishop takes on f3, takes on f3, and this position, I want to mention a couple of things. Uh, first, Probably you're aiming for c4. Yeah, so for example, again, you're aiming for a position queen d3, knight e2, c4, knight c3, and push for d5 at the right moment. But please be careful. For example, let's say you are playing um, immediately knight e4. Oh, just a second. Okay, let's give a black move. Short castle, knight e4. Uh, let's say, I'm not sure if you need to trade. And the reason is that you're enjoying a space advantage. When you're enjoying a space advantage, you don't want to trade pieces. It's your opponent who wants to trade pieces. It's not you, right? So knight e2 makes more sense than knight e4 because your opponent is cramped. He's happy to trade. What I wanted to show you is that this position is... It's still great. But watch out for black, organizing an easy counterplay. Let's say somehow magically it happens. I don't know how to make it happen, really. Uh, okay, bishop f3. This queen is not good. Let's say I'm going to somehow trade the queens. It's not good. Just watch out for this position, because your opponent might position rook here, the bishop here, other rook here and he is going to pressure your pawn on d4 yeah you should push d pawn yeah that's the essence but you should watch out that if you're going to be slow if you're going to be playing not decisively chess your opponent is going to start to pressure the pawn on d4 and doubling the rooks positioning the bishop on b6 or f6 is a known idea so you need to need to know this. But still, I believe you should be aiming for c4, knight c3 and the very strong pawn center. But here, just don't trade the knights. I don't think you should trade the knights. Just play knight e2. Just play knight e2. He plays knight e5. Don't allow the bishop trade. Just go away. He is still struggling with it with it uh, with the space advantage. So let's say something like bishop f6 c4 knight e7 um i don't know maybe some active move bishop f4 uh, bishop f4 is going to be knight five okay that's not so good so knight e7 bishop c3 knight e7 and some kind of a, a battle for space and typically you're aiming in this position you're aiming for pawn push in the center d4 d5 but your opponent, if he's struggling to equalize, he's usually aiming for the e-pawn push. So don't miss that. So be ready for that. So probably you want to play bishop g2 just in time and be ready for your opponent that he might push e5. So let's say if he pushes here e5, 
Um, you don't have to take. Maybe just queen c2 takes a knight d4. Or you're just looking for ways to open the queen side and open your light score bishop. So that's the that's the essentially uh, bread and butter of the Scandi uh, Scandi defense. You can you can also play more carefully if you're concerned the pawn on d4 might become a target. You can play c3, but you know this looks extremely passive. And normally black is trying to solidify its knights. Uh, outpost on d5 by playing b5. So that's a very classical idea. And so that after c4, he just takes on c4 and keeps the knight on d5. However, this seriously weakens the c6 pawn. So I don't know if that's a great idea. I highly doubt it. So for example, you could play rook c1, c4, take with a rook, and now seriously pressure the pawn on c6. You're still enjoying the two bishop advantage so if i'm black if i'm having this position i'm thinking how should i trade off some pieces i want to trade off the dark square bishops i want to trade off a couple of knights and then try to pressure your pawn on d4 and maybe c5 or e5 try to break it up so Instead, you're looking for some ways to open your position, or maybe you can try to organize some kind of inspired attack at the king side. Yeah, g4, g5 right now, it looks a bit ridiculous, but maybe some quiet moves as, let's say, uh, queen d3. Um, okay, queen d3 is 95. Yeah, that's not so good. Yeah, we don't need to miss 95. I mean, it is possible to play knight e4, but it slightly contradicts with the entire approach to fight for the space advantage. So I, I would imagine I don't want to trade him. He could have though done it immediately. Knight d5. Yeah, he could have played it immediately. Knight e5, keep some pieces on the board. Knight c3, bishop c3, short castle. Yeah, this also could be a possibility. Yeah, maybe you cannot really avoid it. But if you can, avoid trading as many pieces as you can. And just uh, play queen d3, uh, b3, bishop c2, d4, and look for, look for the push of d5. You're aiming for trading these two pawns and opening your last square bishop so that you have better chances in the endgame. Um, yeah, so I imagine it could be quite provocative for black to play, uh, just a second, yeah, to play bishop h5, bishop g6, and play this position, because this creates some weaknesses in white's camp, but still for black to occupy the dark squares with a plan of g5, knight f8, knight g6, knight f4, that's taking forever. So again, you're looking for ways to open the position. So let's say h takes, queen d3, short castle, bishop g3, let's say, I don't know, knight e5, knight e2, you want to push c4. And now after b5, you can already, I think you can already play, I was thinking about c4. Okay, the engine says that's not the best, but it's good enough. Yeah, b takes, queen takes, uh, queen b6, and I just pressure the pawn. b3, rook c1, okay, I misplayed already. But I guess you don't need to rush. You don't need to rush with that. You can prepare this to play the c4 idea whenever you want. And your opponent is going to take it forever to reroute this knight. And you can perhaps to play at the right moment this c4 idea and try to get to these weaknesses. Just don't trade this knight on d5. Okay. Whew. Okay, that was that was pretty long. This is probably the longest boot camp I've ever done. I imagine. I've been talking non-stop for three hours. And uh, now it's now it's the time for question and answers. Do you have some questions? Maybe I skipped some important part. I apologize about that. 
Again, the purpose of the bootcamp wasn't to offer you an encyclopedia. If you're looking for a complete approach against the Scandi, I guess you just need to either purchase a course or study some, some books, how to properly play against uh, E4, D5. This is just an introduction, like a general philosophy, how you should be playing against the Scandinavian. And again, guys, Scandinavian is a fun opening. <laughs> it is fun. I've played myself uh, in the past. Just change your attitude towards it. If black plays D4, E5... I don't know, it's, it, it's just bad, no? What was this? What was it again? England? No, what was it? What was it titled? This ridiculous opening. <laughs> D for E5. I don't remember it. What about it? Understand an opening is better to study the theory. Uh... Yeah, some theory in some model games. Some theory in some model games. and um, So again, while you're thinking about your questions, very, very short recap. Very short recap. Of course, you can watch the video when it's going to be uploaded on YouTube. It's still going to be here on Twitch, by the way. You don't need to go to YouTube. Of course, I would appreciate you would head over to YouTube as well. Subscribe to my channel. It's very, very small. Still, um, I'm. it's under construction, so to speak. I'm, I have big plans to expand it, just, just not at the moment. Right. So I would appreciate if you would follow it. Um, yeah. So a quick recap. After d5, knight of 6, I propose to start with knight of 3. The knight of 3 idea is to avoid the funny ideas with bishop g4. Scottish? Do I sound like Scottish accent to you? <laughs> no, wait, that was Irish, no? I don't know. <laughs> I could make a fun stream about the accents. So, uh, yeah, bishop g4, bishop b5. 97 and h3 now this was the best order of the moves and after bishop h5 knight c3 a6 now go back and after knight e5 queen d5 short castle b3 bishop b2 c4 g4 knight e5 now this is a very familiar setup it's seen from several lines i was showing you today Scottish twang. Uh, I'm I'm not Scottish. I'm Latvian. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll take it as a compliment, though. <laughs> okay, so e4 d5, uh, e takes knight of six. Start with knight of three. Queen d5, knight c3 transposes because you're gonna play d4 and nothing changes in your approach. And after knight e5, still play d4, knight c uh, c4, knight c3. If the bishop lands on g4, you are just playing h3. If it goes away, you just play g4, knight e5. Very simple. Very simple. So, for example, one of the lines here was g6, c4, knight b6, knight c3. Still, bishop g4 is not good. Here specifically, it is because of c5. c5 and queen b3 and bishop c4 and knight e5. This bishop is completely misplaced for this line. So that's not a good line. So I imagine, yeah, the critical line here could be, uh, again, I showed you this line, uh, bishop b5, knight e7, h3, um, bishop h5, knight c3, a6, here, here, d4, takes, takes, here, 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 b3, here, bishop b2, castle, c4, queen goes, g4, and knight e5. And white is doing great. You're going to win the bishop, you're going to position your bishop here, and either a kingside attack with h4, h5, rook h1, or push forward the d-pawn. Whatever you choose, it's fine. Um, right. Now, let's go back to the second move, queen d8. A 
Bishop g4, in my humble opinion, is a dubious continuation, mainly because of h3. Bishop h5 again is g4 and knight e5. Bishop f3, queen f3, c6. I propose to play the very aggressive g4. I know there are a number of interesting combinations here. There's queen d3, there's bishop e3, but the general philosophy is black is bluffing with to win the pawn on d4. So if he is bluffing, should you really protect it? And there are some lines that involved black taking the pawn on d4. Otherwise, if he is not going to do that, you are going to play g5, knight e4, bishop d2, short castle, c4, h4, h5. You're just going to checkmate your opponent. So queen d4. I guess, and after, yeah, after bishop e3, queen d8, g5, knight e5, long castle, e6. And what was the line here again? I already forgot. I think it was h4. Was it? I don't remember. I think it was h4. Bishop d4 takes, takes. Oh wait, 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 wait. I mixed up. I mixed. Up. Sorry, it was takes, takes, and c4. Yeah, takes, takes, c4, and. Go for aggressive opening of the position. Takes, queen e4, knight c6, bishop c4, and black is just running out of good moves. Because short castle is going to start a powerful attack at the king side with h bishop d3 and h5. So this is extremely risky. I imagine it's going to land black into trouble. And after queen e5, I guess you can just take. You can just take. And just win back the pawn. With better chances. So maybe this already is the best that black can do. But yeah, if, if this is the best, then maybe th this is not a good approach at all. And e takes is just bad. Yeah, Rook e1 and this king is uh, just in trouble. So this is not good. So that's my approach. I'm, I'm proposing to play g4, g5. Right. If, if black plays e6... He doesn't take. You're still pushing g5. You're playing knight e4. And if black insists on creating some trouble here with a tricky move queen d5, treat it as a gambit. Just play a3, bishop g2, bishop f4, and focus on the attack of the king side. So this is what I explained earlier in the bootcamp. I'm just doing a short recap now. And uh, yeah, so queen d8 is uh, possible, of course. And after g6, bishop g6, I propose to play bishop g5, queen d2, bishop h6, long castle, h4, h5. Now this looks extremely, extremely interesting. So if black plays uh, queen a5, Again, nothing changes. Knight f3, bishop g4 is met by h3, g4, knight e5. Black plays c6. Then we play bishop c4, bishop d2, and knight e5. Now, this was the critical line. Taking an f6, and then depending on how opponent is responding, either bishop b3 or queen e2, white is enjoying better chances. Um, yeah, and finally, there is the queen d6. After queen d6, d4, knight of 6, knight of 3. Here, black has tested a number of continuations. a6 is risky, because again, black is bluffing with win winning the pawn on d4. I already explained it, I don't know how many times today. You don't care about the pawn on d4. You are happily uh, sacrificing it to uh, increase your lead in development and open the position. And experienced players with black, they know this. Maybe they're not telling you, but they know this. Uh, so if black plays g6, the simplest way for you to continue is knight b5, knight a3, knight c4, knight e5, and just enjoy a good position. And black is not having this typical pressure against the pawn on d4. And c6, yeah, I guess c6 could be one of the main moves in the position. So c6, there's a number of ways how you can play this position, but I guess the simplest is g3, bishop f4, bishop g2. So the main line goes like this. And black again will have to give away the bishop at some point. And eventually we lead this position, where black is trying to trade off some pieces to relinquish um, 
a white space advantage and you are not interested to trade off pieces because you are enjoying the space advantage and you're pushing for c4 d5 oh my goodness that was a very very fast recap i did my best really okay okay guys i'm i'm tired i don't know about you i'm tired so the next next stream i'm gonna do now <laughs> thank you Barry. i'm gonna do is uh next wednesday i think so next wednesday i'm gonna i do a, a puzzle puzzle solving thank you thank you guys appreciate that uh, I'll definitely up upload this uh, to my YouTube channel. It's going to be available here on Twitch as well. At the moment, I've removed uh, access just only for subs. Everybody can access it. Yeah, so I don't know really what's the right approach. <laughs> but either way, um, what usual Sunday morning? About the... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the next stream. The next stream is going to be this Wednesday. Next friend, Next Wednesday. I'm going to solve puzzles because once a week I'm solving puzzles. I'm either doing the puzzle survival, either I'm solving the normal puzzles and doing some educational stuff, explaining my thought process. And of course, you can participate as well. I would be very happy about that. Um, on working days, I normally start to stream at uh, 5 p.m. Central European time. Yeah, that's the normal time. So that's 6 p.m. here in Latvia. On weekends, I normally stream on Sundays. Next Sunday, I cannot still confirm that. I might have a friendly blitz match against a strong GM. We'll see about that. Sort of, we agreed. I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, sort of. So next Sunday, I might organize this blitz match. Maybe there's going to be an arena as well. I still don't know it yet. And if nothing will change... Next Friday, I should have my next sub battle against another streamer. Who is it going to be? Maybe it's going to be Dina. Maybe it's going to be somebody else. I still don't know who. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, I'll perhaps raid you over to somebody now. Yeah, I'll try to do more sub battles. Yeah, because I, I realize this is what uh, people uh, find to be exciting and also for me it's extremely extremely interesting and exciting to do a commentary of uh, of uh, lower rated players uh, the, the joy they they bring to the table right all right guys let me check who is here uh, just a second just a sec let me check who is here who are you who i could raid you to over Oh, there's Paul and Gruber. Just a second. What is he doing there? Half minutes, six minutes. Paul and Gruber. Mm -hmm. I had a, the last oh, wow. uh, sub battle against like him. That. Me and Paul were doing it together. Hey, Stiopic. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means a lot. I just got uh, oh, there's Frank as well. Just a second. I haven't read him for a million years. This is a mate. By the way, Frank recently this signed. He signed um, uh, this uh, uh, agreement with a with a esports uh, team. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Bongrober is doing doing a sabel with Wait, who? D3. Hashtag. Where's hashtag? Okay, there they are. Bongrober is here. Okay, maybe we could raid you over you to joined? Paul. Okay, guys, I'm reading over to Paul. Maybe James, those two links at the bottom. I played against there him the last sub battle. Uh, we had an adoption match as well. That was super exciting. And again, I would Perfect like to thank you for point. being here today. I hope you we appreciate you. the Scandinavian. If you were a fan of the Scandinavian oh, defense, I apologize for sort of crushing ice. some some cards there. It still should be fine if Black is doing it correctly. Anyone. And please say hello to Paul. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy your day and yeah, let me see, see you in my next stream next Wednesday. Take care. So Have fun. Out.